beginning to be an annual event. A few years ago on Thanksgiving Day, uh, that great rivalry we thought ended between Paulsburg and Glassburg, but ever since then, it seems that they meet somewhere along the way in the group. Remember the great Kevin Ross game at Palmyra when Paulsburg came back one also in 1980, and again in 1982, Glassburg uh, winning way back in 1975, but then in 81 and 83. So the last five Group One championships in South Jersey have been divided between these two great football teams. Then so often they've come up and matched up against each other. The last time, of course, last year, but not in the final. Yeah, of course, that was in the semifinal, and uh, that surprised a lot of people, Mike, the ease with which Glassboro uh, handled Paulsboro in that one uh, by a score of 34-8. to eight. And, Mike, we have some highlights of that great game last year. 342 left to play here in the first period. It's nothing, nothing but Glassboro from their own one yard line. Lee Frank's going to hold on to the ball. Looks like a safety possibility. They'll turn with the pulling guard, Mazio, out in front of Redman. Redman wants the corner. He fights and struggles at his end. Sean Redman did it all on his own. Hold it up. Look, kick looks good. Craig Daniels indicates yes, it is Glassboro 7, Paulsboro 2. Also changing their defense in tight. They're going to go with Lockbaum. Look at Lockbaum scamper into the end zone. No problem at all. Excellent block thrown on the right side that time by Irv Gustillo, the great guard that's done it all year long for Glassburn. From Lockbaum's hold. Again, has it straight ahead. See if no problem at all. It will be 14 to 2. Glassburn now on top and things have turned around. Second down, 14 yards to go for the touchdown. This time he'll put Lockbaum in the slot on the left side along with Jimmy Lester. He'll go on a draw to Redman. Redman smells end zone, gets a block from Lockbaum at the four yard line, and Redman's in for the score. Frank looking for the extra point again, has it up and long enough and true. It'll be good. So with 4 11 left to play in the third period, Glassburg 21, Paulsburg 2. Touchdown here as we start the fourth quarter of action. Pass on the halfback option from Redmond to Lockbaum and Glasper strikes here as we start fourth period action. That only took him five seconds. Lee Frank looking to add the point to high snap, but he gets it away. Quick foot there. And good. So Glasper 28, Balls for 2, 11.55 to play. There's the starters, huh? Yeah, there's Lockbaum, Lock Lock 16, Redmond, 22. Good kick this time. It will be taken by Scott at the 12-yard line. Straight up field. He's got running room. It's only Wigglesworth. He's not going to get him. Scott's going to go all the way if there are no penalty flags, and that's what Paul's Burn needed to get back into this ball game. Dixon will bring us back into an eye formation as he looks for the two. He's going to double fake, look into the end zone. Chris Morris is wide open. He couldn't get it there, and he bounces off of Gaines as he looks for him at the goal line. He will not get it. It'll remain 28-8 with 11.42 left to play. Frank wants to throw. Looking long for Fowler in the end zone. He's open and has it. Darrell Fowler, who had come into the ball game a couple of plays ago. Lee Frank, looking for the 35th point. This time it's going to be off to the left. He'll miss this one. So 9.50 remaining to play in the ball game. Glasper, 34, Paulsburg, 8. Glasper, 34, Paulsburg, 8. And Glasper has a spot in the South Jersey Group 1 final. Go play the winner of the Palmyra Audubon football game, and we will be there on Channel 5. And, of course, uh, Glassboro went on to defeat Audubon for the championship last year, Mike, that great 11-0 Glassboro team. Yeah, now they had the duo last year, Lockbaum and Redman, and this year it's been Sean Redman all the way, Bob, but there was some question coming into today's action whether Sean would be able to play or not. It appears we're going to see Sean Redman. The only question is how much and how often. I talked to Sean at the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey meeting Monday night, Mike, and he was a very... Uh, a glum young man at that particular point in the week because uh, he was kind of doubtful that he would be able to play. Of course, pronounced fit to play earlier this week uh, uh, by an orthopedic surgeon, and uh, he's ready to go. I think that is a question, Mike. Is he 100%? Uh, a 90% Sean Redmond still a most effective back, that's for sure. He has had, of course, one of the great years, Mike, in the history of South Jersey football, the 
leading scorer in the state coming into this game with his 196 points. Also still has a shot at Charlie Fryer's all-time South Jersey single season scoring record of 210 points. He needs a couple of touchdowns in today's game uh, to do that. But Redmond, despite missing one game, has had just a remarkable season for Glassboro High School. And what a remarkable career, not the, the least of which is his 61 touchdowns. Well, the one the benefit of that game, if there was any benefit at all out of Redmond's injury against Clearview on Thanksgiving, Glassboro demonstrated what John Avini, their head coach, has been talking about all year. He does not believe they're a one-dimensional football team, and the other uh, weight offensively goes under the strong right arm of Lee Frank. Yeah, Lee Frank, of course, uh, in a lot of honors last year with a tremendous season. He is overshadowed, no question about that, by Sean Redmond, but in that Clearview game, Frank threw for a couple of touchdowns, 256 yards, and Glassboro... Uh, uh, defeated an excellent Clearview team 21-14. An important game for Glassboro, no question, Mike, because they did discover uh, that they can win without Sean Redmond. And the Paul's first side, Tom Brown, there's a probably no better coach around. That's what the statistics say as far as a winning percentage among active coaches. And this season, some people said would be a rebuilding year for Paul's Bear, but the statistics don't indicate that as we come down to the final game of the season. Been a great year, and he's got some super personnel on his Paul's Bear team. Yeah, they just keep coming up with one great team after another, Mike, and it was a team that was supposed to finish in the middle of the pack in the Colonial Conference this season. Obviously, that has not happened. They share the Colonial Conference championship with Sterling and with Gateway, an 8-2 Paul's Bear team. Excellent quarterback, Mike Brady. He is one of the best in the area. Uh, a lot of underclassmen, again, uh, paving the way for Paul's run. Of course, uh, their great line led by Jimmy Pandolfo this week mean, named the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey Lineman of the Year. Redmond, of course, back of the year, picked by the Touchdown Club. So uh, that should be an interesting matchup there with Pandolfo and Redmond. But a lot of great players, as always, on this Paul's run football team. Uh, Jimmy Gentile, great linebacker. Kind of some uh, a no-name offense other than quarterback Brady this year, Mike. But uh, all the backs have been very, very effective. All right, and there will be some outstanding performances here today, and we're going to take a look now at the players from both clubs who will play a big part in today's football game. My name is Jay Davis. I'm an offensive wide receiver for Glass High School and defensive end. Tim Lester, defensive end, and right tight end. Well, Jay Bear, I'm a two-way tackle. My name is Chris Carmelizzo, and I play offensive and defensive tackle. Guard, linebacker. My name is Glenn Escrow, I play offensive end and defensive uh, outside linebacker. My name is Woody Griscom, I play offensive left end. Robert May, I play defensive back and offensive halfback. Ron Barrett, offensive right guard, defensive right inside linebacker. Frank Mancini, defensive halfback. Benjamin Credo, fullback and nose guard. Lee Frank, uh, fullback. Hi, my name is Bill Stewart. I'm an offensive center and a defensive nose guard. John Wirtz, Cobra. Mike Brown, Pat. Scott Campbell, buddy. Seth Vento, a little linebacker. Brad Polk, a little linebacker. Ben Kelvin, now. Fred is in. My name is Lamont Briscoe, nose guard. I want Fred. Daniel Van Stippard, defensive end. The other players we're going to be looking at today, and of course we also had a chance to see two fine coaches, John Avini and Tom Brown. You match those two up, it's got to be a great football game. Well, you already mentioned Brown's record, Mike, and he is the uh, currently the number one coach in South Jersey in terms of career one loss percentage. Uh, just a, a tremendous record for the Glassboro State graduate who went to Triton Regional High School. Tom with another outstanding team. A lot of people didn't expect it. And of course, John Avini, uh, the 70 wins, 30 losses in his fine career coming into this one. We talked about the three uh, group titles to match Tom Brown's. John Avini, former professional place kicker with the Chicago Bears, Washington Redskins, Indiana University graduate. And uh, these are two close friends who also are two outstanding coaches. So the, the matchups continue, Mike. We could have one of the fine games in recent South Jersey history. All right, top players, top coaches. The South Jersey Group 1 Finals. Pauls Bear and Glassbar will be back with all the game action right after these messages. Hello, Jackson, how are you? 
Coach the Bulldogs and the Red Raiders from Falls Fair High School. Let's go right now to the midfield with John Lesko, today's referee and the coin, the coin toss. My name is Mr. Lesko, I'm your referee today. We have Mr. Romanick, figure umpire. Mr. Peterbach, head linesman. Mr. Acerbo, field judge. Mr. McGovern is the back judge. Mr. Bisbing is in the press box. He is an official. He has the official clock. On the chain crew, we have Mr. Gessinger, Mr. Concannon, and Mr. Decker. Okay, Glasper, you are the visitor. Who's gonna call the toss? Give me a head or a tail while it's in the air. If I drop it, we'll do it again. He called heads. We have tails. Paulsboro has won the toss. You may defer your choice to the second half, or you may take your choice now. You'll take your choice now, and you're gonna receive. You will have a choice the second half. You're gonna defend the skull. Stand here, please. Paulsboro, you stand here. Paulsboro has won the toss. Shall receive. Fellas, shake hands, have fun. We're here to help you, you help us. Thank you. John Lesko doing an outstanding job, and of course, he's one of the top officials in all of South Jersey, so we'll get a good game called today. And as you saw, the toss one and the choice to receive by Paulsburg. Last bird to kick off. Bob, a couple of times this season, we've seen that choice to defer come into play, and what it really means today is, while there is a slight wind, it should not really be a big factor. Wind blowing a lot harder about an hour ago, Mike. I was out here. Uh, what wind there is seems to be pretty much a crosswind coming out of the west, so uh, it could affect the, uh, affect the kicking both ways. The teams will line up, and we'll have the national anthem. about to get the final question of the 1984 season in group one answered here in South Jersey as Ballsburg and will huddle around assistant coach Parashi as Tom Brown of course head coach continues his tradition of going to the top of the press box and making the selections for plays and defenses from that position and the Bulldogs of Glassburg will group around head coach John Avini these two teams used to being here and they've more or less traded the championship uh, honors over most of the last decade. Everything points to an outstanding game today. A couple of questions, whether Mike Brady, the fine quarterback from Paulsboro, will demonstrate what everybody at this end of the county has been saying, that he's as good as any quarterback around and one of the tops, if not the top, in the Colonial Conference. And the big question for Glasper might be just how ready Sean Redman is in his final high school football game. The call of today's game, Bob Schreier. And a gorgeous day it is, Mike. It culminates, uh, I think, the best fall I can ever remember for weather for high school football, Mike. We just, uh, we haven't really had a bad weekend yet. We went through the entire season without rain on Saturday, and that's the first time since we've been covering sports in five years at Star Communication, and boy, it's always been a highlight of our coverage of high school sports to have Glassburg and Fallsburg, and I'm looking forward to this one. Wigglesworth kicking off for Glassburg, deep for Fallsburg, Merchant, and Albie Quarles. High deep kick by Wigglesworth. Quarles will take it at the 15-yard line. Has some room. One man to beat. And he doesn't beat him. A great play made in the open field by Timmy Lester. They keep him back there for just that kind of situation, Mike. And Lester saved the touchdown, but a great return by Quarles gives Paulsburg excellent field position at the 41 of Glassboro. 
a look at those weather conditions. 57 degrees, winds out of the southwest at 10 to 15 miles an hour, mostly sunny. John Mondelli doing his homework again. What a return, and uh, balls were in great shape with Mike Brady running the attack. Muse and Worthy behind him. And the second back through, big hole for Worthy. He gets down inside the 35 to the 34, and that kickoff return by Quarles, Mike, has really brought Paulsburg to life early. Well, you saw a championship play on that kickoff. Of course, you saw the Paulsburg team that all week long in practice knew that every play would be a key win, and as a result, when they practiced special team play, they really emphasized it, and that gave the opening. And the Glasper side, Lester did his job by playing safety all the way. Had he been over exuberant, they might have been in trouble. Six yard gain. Big hole for Muse. He has a first down and holes along with him, Frank Mancini. So Paulsboro with the first first down of the football game. They're in great shape at the Glassboro 25-yard line. And what we are used to seeing out of Tom Brown football team, straight fundamental football. That's been the key in the first two plays. You'll see it here, just a double team back to the inside and then leaving the end by himself. And the run goes to the inside as they knew the end had outside responsibility. First and 10, first first down in the football game. Worthy with a pretty good hole over the left side, sets down in a hurry, however. And Worthy gained a couple of yards to call it the 22 yard line, three yard pickup, second down and seven. Just underway, 10.35 to play in the first period, but the Red Raiders of Paulsboro threatening. Well, Paulsboro, of course, as you know, is an option football team, but they don't show it that frequently. Uh, Brady, very, very good at reading keys, and they lull you to sleep with that inside work that we've seen in the first three plays, then go outside. There it is. Quick pitch to Muse to the outside. And the play turned back in nicely by Barry Lewis, or that could have been a bigger gainer, but a good pick up nonetheless, nonetheless by Muse. What happens on that option is around three different points at which the quarterback has to make his judgment. At that time, they closed down quickly on Brady, who on the reverse pivot had made the fake inside on the dive. As soon as he saw that end coming to him, he got rid of the ball quickly, and they came very close to getting enough for the first down yardage. But you need the key. Quarterback uh, has to be bright, has to be able to read keys, and Brady's one of the best at that. Second and two from the 17. Merchant slip to the right. Second man through, Muse gets the ball, has a first down. Still on his feet. Oh, play called dead, but a good run by Muse. The Ballsboro backs worthy and Muse having an excellent first drive. A lot of responsibility on the front five for Glassbar defensively. Bob Bateman, Donovan Stewart, Delia, and Lester. They've got great size and tremendous experience. Everybody but Lester is senior, and Lester plays like a senior. But the responsibility today, I think, going to go to Mark Gype and Ron Barrett, the two inside linebackers. They're going to have to really react quickly. First and 10 again from the 12-yard line. Hughes this time going nowhere. Left side of the glass for a line doing its job as Bill Stewart, big 245-pound senior tackle right there. No gain on the play. And they've got an injury out on the field. Uh, that'll be a key player, Ron Barrett, number 66, the sophomore who broke into the starting lineup. Uh, they really need him at the linebacking spot. He looks like he'll be all right as he... Got a good shot, and he'll go off quickly on the far side, but it's pretty tough to break into the starting lineup as a sophomore at Glassboro High School, and he's done a fine job, and of course, he's the son of the athletic director, Bob Barrett. Little loss on the play. It'll be second down, about 10 and a half for the Raiders. Brady, back to throw, rolling to his right. Almost intercepted. Great penetration that time by Deideman and by Stewart. You get those two big young men coming at you. Brian Donovan, 6'1", 225-pound senior, and Bill Stewart, 5'11", 245-pound senior, and Brady, who looks to the sideline now, waits for the play, is really going to be hurried today. They've got great size and experience up front, and a lot of observers, Bob, thought that might be the difference in this ball game because they outweigh the Fallsboro offensive line, and they've got a couple of sophomores playing for Fallsboro on the offensive line. Donovan, of course, uh was doubtful for this game. He's come along nicely. Third and ten. Bradley rolling to his right. Pitches to Worthy, who has some room. Looking for the end zone. He's in. Diving in from the two. Great block. Spring Worthy for a 12-yard touchdown run with 8.41 to play in the first period. And senior John Worthy scores to put Paulsburg in front. Six-nothing. And Mike Big hole there, I tell you, some great blocking. It was open all the way. Well, I still have to credit, though Worthy finished it off and did some outstanding running in the final seven yards. Uh, the key, again, has to be Brady on the option. Timmy Lester came in and just leveled him, and he felt that coming, got rid of the ball perfectly. They did not have the 
play from the corner on that side to come up and uh, get the worthy. And you give those speedsters some running room, they're going to get in every time with the uh, big yardage, at least if not the touchdown. They'll go for two. Brady to his left. It's caught. It's good. Great catch over the shoulder by Scott Campbell. Two-point conversion. And Paulsburg has an 8-0 lead. Mike, we'll look at that touchdown run by Worthy again. All right, watch Brady. Watch Brady as he turns. He makes the fake. And then here comes Lester. He's going to come in and really get right at him. He gets rid of the ball, though. There's no support from the corner. Looking to left of the screen, the blocking downfield, the ceiling. And then that fine block right there at the end on the right side. And then Worthy finishes it off, gets the shoulder down, and leaps into the end zone. Mike Brady starts it. Worthy finishes it. We'll be back with more game action following these messages. Mike Linder and Bob Shryock back at Paulsboro, where Paulsboro has spun Glassboro with an early touchdown just three minutes and 19 seconds into the football game. 12-yard touchdown run by Worthy. Two-point conversion pass to Campbell. 8 nothing Paulsboro. And the kickoff by Pete Grant. He'll be kicking deep to either Barry Lewis or to Robert Mann. So Glassboro about to have its first possession. Paulsboro crowd on its feet, loving it. Mann takes it at his 10-yard line. Straight up the field, no one back uh, by Quarles for Paulsworth that set up the touchdown as Mann is dropped inside his own 30 at the 29-yard line. And now we'll see this bonnet glass for offense led by quarterback Lee Frank and the great senior back Sean Redman, leading scorer in the state of New Jersey. Glasper has to be somewhat stunned at with the ease with which Paulsburg went down that field. They're going to have to answer it, Bob, right here. Get some yardage, hold on to the football for a while. Now in the backfield with Redman, who ran, carries on the first play. Redman trying to get to the outside, dies for a couple of yards as the play was turned back in. And Redman on his first carry, no indication there, Mike, that uh, he's having any problem. Now the real question when you have that knee is your ability to cut. And that, of course, has been the forte of Sean Redman. He comes up to a hole. And he's one of those great backs that looks and finds the hole. He doesn't go where it's diagrammed if it moves. But you've got to be able to have that stop and start movement. And sometimes the knee keeps you from being able to do that. Four-yard gainer. It's a reverse. And uh, not much of a gain by Bateman as the handoff to Redmond. Then two, Bateman gained a couple of yards, but not very much at all as Ballsborough read it well to the 34, where it'll be third down and four. And Jeff Gentile, the linebacker on the right side, was not fooled by the... Reverse action, held his position well and just wrapped up Bateman and took him down after the short gain. But uh, that's another key to a sound fundamental football. Do you stay in your defensive position or do you move away from where you're supposed to be? Redmond with the carry. He's not going to get the first down and that brings the Paulsburg crowd to its feet. So Glassburg denied by a very tough Paulsburg defense on its first possession. And that'll force the first punt of the football game, the early going like all Paulsboro. Now they seem to be the most excited of the two clubs. Glassboro and John Avini always like to keep things somewhat low key. They say, let's just be consistent in our football play. Let's not have ups and downs. But Paulsboro, with the tremendous athletic tradition, seems to get up for the big games. Lee Frank, excellent punter, will kick it for Glassboro. Gets a good snap to either Merchant or Quarles. Low kick that miscommunication between Carls and uh, Carls and Merchant and that'll be an excellent glass for a punt all the way down to the 15 yard line. Well that's a freshman out there Emmett Merchant and uh, as Quarles looked at it it looked as if it was going to bounce right to him and then as it hit the turf it went in the other direction and Merchant had already given up on it and decided that Albie would be running the ball and he let it go and uh, that makes the kicking of Frank so important in this ball game, and he got a real good one now. Paulsburg has a long way to go. 6.30 to play, first period. Paulsburg eight, Glassburg nothing. Paulsburg with its second possession. They'll split the great freshman, Emmett Merchant, nicknamed Speed by our Mike Linder, to the right. Big hole again for Muse. Those holes really opening inside as the Paulsburg line, Mike, is opening some gaping holes. Uh, Doing a good job on those huge grass for alignment. Well, Barrett, really, the linebacker, remember, was injured somewhat on the first series uh, defensively. Really got blown away on that block. Straight ahead blocking. Good job being done by Bowen, Pandolfo, Cockrell, Schultz, and Wilson. The interior five from that offensive line for Fallsburg. They're doing nothing fancy with the blocking pattern so far. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Second back through Muse. He'll be close to the first down. Hughes and Worthy having a big first quarter. Another first down for Paulsburg. They have had four first downs already. 
midway through the first period, Glassboro has had none. What you like about this kind of football, fundamental football, is it's all straight ahead. It comes down to man to man. They haven't been doing much X blocking or double teaming, and it comes down to, hey, I'm coming right at you. Let's see if you can beat me. So far, Paulsburg has uh, been the winner in that contest. First and 10 from the 25. Worthy, big hole. Tries to get to the outside, still on his feet, finally dragged down on a saving tackle by Bateman. But I'll tell you something, Mike, that calls for an offensive line really doing the job. And Mews and Worthy hitting the holes in a hurry. This advance, 16 yards to the 41. Another calls for a first down. Look at it again, Mike. This is the way it's diagramming the playbook. We'll just make the first fake, freeze the linebacker, then we'll go with straight ahead blocking and let the back get into the secondary and let him do it all on his own. And Worthy finished it up beautifully. Back to live action. Five first downs for Fallsboro. Mews, not much doing this time as the middle of that big Glassboro line uh, does the job. Tacklers led in there by Ben Cradell. You know, Donovan Stewart and Delia, the middle three, Bob, may be just overcharging on this. And what they have to do is really hit straight up, control their blocker, and then shuck them off away from the play and get into the hole. Instead, they're trying to blow through. And the good speed of Paulsburg, they're by them before they can re react back. Second down and eight. And now the Glassboro defense beginning to do its job as worthy as stopped for a no game. Cradell again, uh, again with part of the tackle. Also in on the tackle is Carmelingo. And gain of a, maybe a half a yard. It'll be third down and eight. A passing down coming up for Mike Brady. Well, we know who's out there. Number 12, Merchant. Well, they have quarrels in the ball game now also. Let's see if he's the split man. And Brady looked good on the two-point conversion and was pressured the other time uh, that he tried to get back and throw. Third and eight. Brady with the pitch to Worthy. Penalty flag down as a great defensive play is made by Brian Donovan, showing that great lateral movement for a big man. But the first penalty flag of the game, and Worthy is down, may be slightly injured on the play. Now he's up. Well, the other time uh, in the option plays that they've run where they've gotten the big yardage, Bob, they haven't gotten the play defensively from the corners at Glassburn. and that's what's made the opening. This time, number 27, Captain, please. Glenn Escrow came up and made the play. We'll listen to the choice the here offense, after we watch this play. Here comes Escrow, 27. He forces the play back to the inside, which lets Donovan make the tackle. Okay, we'll go back 15, it'll still be third down. If he refuses the penalty, we'll have fourth down. refuse the penalty. We have a clip on the offense. Refuse fourth. That's about the only time you refuse a 15-yard penalty is when it's a fourth down and guaranteed punting situation. Otherwise, you take it in every chance you get in order to move people back, and you've got to have faith in your defense. But you want the football back, so you turn it down if you know they're going to punt. Mike Bowen, the kicker for Paulsboro. Lone safety, Robert Mann for Glassboro back at about his own 30-yard line. Owen with a good, high, spiraling kick, driving man back over his shoulder at the 21 with a fair catch. Excellent kick by Bowen, and Glasper, which moved nowhere in his first possession, has another chance with 3.44 to play first period, and Paul's were leading 8 nothing. First time Glasper had the ball, as you point out, didn't do much. Redmond with a couple of opportunities, Bateman on the reverse, and uh, it just seems to me that they're going to have to loosen Paul's bar up and use the arm of Lee Frank a couple of situations early, try and hold the linebackers, keep them from reacting as quickly as they did on the first series. He has a couple of great receivers in Lester and Bateman. Redmond the lone setback. Draw play to Redmond, it closes in a hurry, gets some yardage. Jeff Gentile there with part of the tackle. He's had a great season. Bowen also in on the stop for Paulsboro. Gain of about four for Redmond. Saw those stats on Redmond. Uh, for everybody, I think, in South Jersey knows that story, and everybody really had their fingers crossed coming into this game that Sean would be okay and uh, have a chance to play. Not so much to play, but just the fact that his career would be able to continue. We would not have a career-ending injury. He got four, second down and six. That's Redmond again. They're running him a lot. Has some room. He'll be short of the first down. So four carries already for Redmond. Bowen again, part of the tackle. He's had a bunch of tackles here early. Gentile there again, so Redmond uh, takes it within about a yard and a half of a first down. They have to get to the 31. It'll be third down and call it one. So Redmond with 14 yards so far on four carries. That was a short trap with Mark Geist, the left guard, pulling, going to the right, Redmond going inside of him. 
why not go with your all-south jersey back when you need a yard? Redmond with the first first down of the football game for Glassboro. The advance to the 35-yard line, and now the Glassboro offense beginning, beginning to get in gear. When you have a good defensive team like Fallsboro, Reese keys well, plays position football, plays what is expected, and... Uh, uh, gives you almost an anticipation. I think you throw on first down. Last time first down, they showed pass but went with the draw. This time they will throw. To Redmond, coming out of the backfield, still on his feet, dragged down by number 34, Aaron Blanding, but a good play for Glassburg gets them their second consecutive first down. That's exactly what we were pointing out. We uh, think you must do this on a first down situation. You can't wait till a guaranteed block. Now here comes Redmond after the fake. He'll turn, come across the flat. He's open as the corner drop deep, landing number 34, and Aaron has to come back now to make the tackle. Redmond with the carry, getting to the outside, has some room. Now Redmond really getting in gear. Another first down, that is three first downs on three successive Redmond carries, two on the ground, one in the air. And Mike, it looks like the Glassboro offense now really underway as Redmond gets into the 39 with a 13-yard pickup. Every team that comes up against Glassboro really has a number one defensive uh, objective, Bob, and that's to keep Redmond from the outside, keep everything contained in the middle. And you can see exactly why on that last play. Redmond gets to the corner. He has the great explosive speed. And he's got 32 yards already. First and 10, Glassboro with three successive first downs. And they're throwing on first down again. Right over the middle, wide open. Great catch by Bateman, good throw by Frank, and that is four first downs for Glassboro on the last four plays. Well, it's all really super when you have two six foot three receivers, Bateman and Lester, who can line up on the same side. You can see them here, and what they'll do is they'll cross. Lester will go to the outside, Bateman will come back to the middle, he'll find himself open. And the reason for that is that with Lester making move to the outside, the corner had to go with him, and it gives a straight look-in pattern available for Bateman. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Mann with his first carry. He's not going very far. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Then Tau there. All right, what happens on that play, Bob? Uh, when they fake the Redman up front, he takes the block uh, that is vacated by Geip, the guard, and then Geip pulls, goes to the right side. But Bateman, or uh, Redman really was just walking up in there and dancing and never got to seal the defender off. He was able to make the tackle on the backfield. Under a minute, first period. Second down, still 10 yards for Glassboro. Like to throw again. Kick off by Albie Carls, his 10th interception of the season, and that'll stop the Glassboro drive. What a season Quarles has had Mike in the defensive secondary. That's his 10th interception of the year. And that comes down to just a, a good read by Quarles and not a very effective pass by Lee Frank. That time, Lester, number 80, had Quarles beaten deep, but Frank was unable to get the ball up and over. Quarles read it well, stepped up in front, and made the interception. Number nine, Albie Quarles. You'll see it on his play. Frank with the double fake, stops. Lester's behind the defender, as you can see there, but he can't get the ball to him. Quarles comes up and makes the outstanding defensive play, looks for running room upfield, and Paul's Burr with the football in pretty decent position. At the 18-yard line. Last for a defensive line beginning to do the job now as Muse gets maybe a yard or two. Last man up off the pile is Brian Donovan, who's had himself a good first period. They were concerned that Donovan, because of an injury, might not play today, but he's come back strong. Gain of two to the 20. That'll do it for the first period from Paulsboro High School. South Jersey Group 1 final. The host calls for a Red Raiders with an 8-0 lead. It's second quarter action, South Jersey Group 1 Finals, and Paulsboro really dominated most of the first period. They got the one touchdown and the two-point conversion. It's eight to nothing. Mike Linder along with Bob Schrock for Stir Communications. South Jersey Group 1 Finals and a super game so far, Bob. Excellent, excellent high school football. After the Quarles interception, Paulsboro with its third possession. Hughes has some room. Finally dragged down from behind by Mark Geit, who's had an outstanding season, but Hughes and Worthy have had a big first half. Eight-yard pick up there, third down and about two for Paulsboro. The ball at their own 27-yard line. A 
that dive play used to be run uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when it really was the number one play in the offensive repertoire of most football teams. He just went straight ahead between the guard and the tackle. The way Paulsburg runs it, they come up and they read the block of the tackle, and that's why you see Muse going to the right so much. And there it is to the left side with Worthy. Wherever the defensive uh, man is taken, Bob, the back reads the key and goes the opposite direction. Puts a lot of responsibility on the back, but Worthy and Muse have been doing a good job with their read so far. Two-yard pickup by Worthy gives Fallsburg another first down at their own 30-yard line. Just underway, second period. Fallsburg dominating so far. Tom Brown, the six wins, 15 losses, a tie, three sectional championships. What a job he's done as head football coach at Fallsburg High School. That's just an average of eight wins a year. <laughs> second man through Muse. Good room again, dragging with him. Timmy Lester, and I tell you, Mike, that uh, falls for offensive line and the faking of Brady, uh, significant keys in the early going. Well, you know, the most important thing on an offensive line, uh, besides knowing who to block and when to block, is, of course, to know exactly when to get off that uh, line, and they just come together as a unit with a quick charge. Six-yard gain makes it second down and four for Fallsboro, which has really controlled the football. Brady keeps it, great faking, has some room. Runs right over Mancini, still on his feet, still on his feet. What a run by Brady, electrifying the Pauls for a crowd. Mike, that was a great run, but what a fake by Brady to spring himself. One question we said before the game was whether or not Mike Brady would demonstrate to everybody in this championship contest whether or not he was the premier quarterback in the Gloucester County area and maybe the top in the whole Colonial Conference. And you see a play like that, there's no question about it. The faking and the reading of the key, and you'll watch Brady here as he does it, comes down the line, Worthy makes the fake inside. Now the end, the corner goes up to take Muse. As a result, Brady tucks the ball in and goes downfield. That's what we mean about reading a key. Look for the corner action. If he's coming to you, get rid of it. And there it, again we watch as uh, uh, they were unable to make the tackle there. Brady reads it again, says, I want more. I'm not going to be satisfied with what I got so far. The freshman, Lewis, number 36, can't get to him. And now look at Muse, still downfield, looking to throw a block, Bob. And that's another key. Don't give up after your first responsibility. Get down there and help out. Great run by Brady. Tremendous execution by the whole Paulsburg football team. I don't think I've seen a quarterback in recent years read that key the way Brady does, Mike. And I tell you, you don't see a quarterback make a run like that very often either. That was a tremendous bit of running. Broke three or four tackles, and Brady has Paulsburg in excellent position again at the Glassboro 29. And uh, you kind of indicated before, Mike, I agree with you. Paulsburg, for some reason, looks a little more up for this football game than does Glassboro. I think it reflects the personalities of the uh, coaching staff. I said that don't put Glassboro down for it. They try and stay even and consistent in every game. Maybe today you had to be up. You had to be more enthused. Washington from the 29, News drags along with him. Bill Stewart after uh, Stewart hit him at the line of scrimmage. Pretty good gain by News gets Fallsboro down to about the 26 yard line. I'll give credit to Stewart on that play, of course, and Bill Stewart has had a tremendous career at Glassboro High School, Bob, but I think it also points out we should indicate that Steve Cockrell, the center, number 54, Paulsburg, just a 160-pound sophomore. What a job for him today. He's part of that no-name up-front team. They go the opposite way. Worthy in the clear again. He is finally tackled by Escrow, but another first down carry by Worthy, and uh, the less heralded Worthy and Muse really are overshadowing the efforts of Redmond here in the first half. Well, they get all the credit, they get the ink, but he's going to have to thank Freddie Wilson, number 78 that time, the left tackle for an outstanding yeah. block. Wilson, a senior, six foot, 190 pounds. He's got the 230-pound Delia playing over him. Well, they've changed it now in the ball game, uh, Carmelingo, and he's really handling Carmelingo. First and goal from the eight. Worthy big hole down near the goal line. He'll be down close to about the one-yard line, but that play's been open all day long, and Worthy hits the hole again. Well, again, Wilson just too much of a strong force there for Carmelingo. Number 70 is getting... They're standing him up, and then they're moving him in either direction that they feel he can go, and then uh, the blocks are being read so beautifully by the, the backs. But Carmelingo in there getting a lot of action in place of Delia. A surprise to us, and uh, just hasn't been able to hold up. Brady, touchdown! So Mike Brady, who set up the touchdown with a great run on an option play, Scores from one yard out, and with 8.57 to play in the first half, 
Paulsboro has dominated Glassboro and leads it 14 nothing. Boy, what a what a surprise so far, Mike. Not so much that they're leading, but the ease with which they're dominating this football game so far. Yeah, nothing wrong with an 82-yard drive. That's a, a series that started at their own 18-yard line, and they just took it down with straight fundamental football. The big play, the Brady run on the option. They'll go for two again. Brady to his right. Pitches to Worthy. Worthy in. Not even touched, and it's 16-0. Paulsburg doing absolutely everything right. Take a look at it again. Come up to the line of scrimmage here. And watch the block at the left guard position, and that's where Brady tucks it in and goes in for the one-yard uh, touchdown on the quarterback sneak, and that's going to make uh, Paulsburg fans and players and coaching staff very, very happy. 16 to nothing. We'll be back with more following these words. 16 to nothing. 8.57 left to go in the half. Glassburg about to get the football. Bob, I sense that Glassburg's got a strike and strike quickly. A left-footed kicker, Brandt, kicking deep. Lewis, the freshman, fumbles the football, and that'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. The rule there, of course, is momentum of the football as opposed to the projection by the runner, the receiver on that kick. If the ball is ruled by the official to go on its own momentum into the end zone, it's an automatic touch back as soon as it gets there in high school football and come out to the 20. Oh, great challenge facing Glasper now. Glasper winning the classic division in the Tri-County Conference in its first season in the Tri-County. Balls for uh, the share of the Colonial. Uh, Glassboro with only five losses out of its last 40 football games. A lot of pressure on the Bulldogs now. First and 10 from its own 20 yard line. Glassboro starting this possession. Redman running hard, but knocked down after a gain of only a couple of yards. And Alpo, yep. He's about to pick up some postseason honors. That young man has really held this football team together. Been a great leader down here. Pandafo, a super name in Paulsboro sports history. And the latest entry in that family, number 65, Jim Pandafo, 5'8", 175 pounds senior. Well, of course, he's being honored this coming Tuesday night, Mike, at the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey Final Banquet at the Woodbury Country Club. Uh, he'll be honored as lineman of the year. Sean Redman will be there to be honored as back of the year, and we'll also honor the coach of the year that night. There's Pandolfo, number 65, and Pete Lamani uh, great, feels great that... Great presentation, uh, huh? Yeah, feels that uh, without Pandolfo, Paulsburg wouldn't even be here today, Mike. He thinks that much of that young man. Sports Week with John Mondelli. We don't want to watch that show this week, do we? Uh, that's uh, right. They're going to talk about your predictions for the 1984 season, but I want to see it because they're going to talk about mine, and I think I beat you this year, Mike. Well, I've always been willing to take that position of just guessing and uh, not really looking into the crystal ball, but you have such a reputation to pr <laughs> yeah. uh, protect. I guess you did your homework and I didn't, but Mondelli's going to rub it in, and there's some concern for Paulsburg right now. Mike Brady on the sideline, and he was limping a little on their final couple of plays, Bob, and they're somewhat worried about him, uh, perhaps, but you can bet that adrenaline will carry him most of the way. Big possession coming up for Glassboro. Gain of four by Redmond on the first play, second and six. Redmond with the pitch, cuts back inside. Three or four Red Raiders all over him constantly. Gentile there uh, to lead the charge. Also number 66, Darren Dubzanski, one of the fine sophomores. Well, I tell you, there are a lot of great underclassmen on both of these teams, Mike. Well, that's what I thought about when I was sitting down figuring this game out. I said, maybe there's a few too many sophomores and juniors on Paulsburg's lineup, and even though there's some youth for Glassburg, they really have some senior experience. But so far, the youngsters have been handling the men with the most experience. Redmond on a third and two carry. Dragged down from behind. What a play from behind by Jeff Gentile, just a tremendous defensive play. Well, Gentile had the freedom that time to come from the linebacking position. He saw them going the other way. He stunted right through the opening where the guard is left to lead the play, and with the great speed was able to get there before they could get into the hole. Watch Gentile now as he'll come right from the right side. He'll get the Redmond before the blocks can set up in front of him, and uh, that's something you can bet from the scouting report they decided to do. When the guard pulls, you take it. Big gamble here, Mike. Fourth and one for Glasper. They're gambling early. The 29-yard line. They go with Redmond, feeling he can get the yard. I tell you, I think, he got it. I think he he's got, got it. it, yeah. It's close, but I believe he got to the 30-yard line. Uh, he got there. The question is how far in front. Well, it has to be the first, because they started from the 20. But, boy, you're right. I guess 
John Avini agrees with what we said when we came back from that last timeout. That was, they're going to have to get one and get one quickly. 7.20 to play first half that Fallsboro has dominated. They lead it 16-0. A couple of touchdowns, a couple of two-point conversions. Glasper trying to battle back. Redmond started early on that play. Frank with the football. Bateman missed it, but I believe Redmond started early. Well, that'll be negated. It'll just become, if it was a motion penalty, it'll become a second and five, incomplete pass in any event. But what they want to do, the coaching staff from Glasper, is take a look and see. That time they had three receivers downfield, Bob, and Lee Frank really had the choice of any one of the three. I still say Frank is going to have to be a major force in this ballgame. That was first down. We had an incompleted pass. Five yards. You're going to refuse it. Go second and ten, okay? Left halfback, you were moving. Motion right here. Refuse two. Well, we know, we know everything that's going on here, Mike. Watch Redmond now. You'll see him start early. Yep, there he goes. Just a step too fast. But watch the good play of Lee Frank. He gets by the defensive end. Then he looks upfield and he finds three men. He looks for Bateman as his key receiver, and uh, Bateman was unable to hold on. Redmond alone set back now, second down and 10 from the 30 yard line. In motion is Bateman. He gets the football. That's a big hole. Leaps over one man, still on his feet. Finally, knocked down by a great tackle by Quarles, who's had a great first half, but a pickup of. About seven yards by Bateman makes it third and three. Dave Bateman started the season as an offensive end. They were using some of the youngsters at the wingback position, and John Avini credited him. He said, hey, we're going to get some more running uh, support in the backfield so we can go the opposite way. Everybody's loading up where we run Sean Redmond, so let's put Bateman at the wingback position. It's been a good change. Another big call for Glasper here at Glasper, third and three. Frank throwing on third down. Lester with a great catch. And he gets out of bounds, knocked out of bounds by Muse, but that's a first down pickup by Lester and a, a good call on third and three, Mike. Third and three is what you like to have as a coach because the defense cannot load up and sit in that pass situation. You always want to get four yards or, or just about four yards on every play because they've got to stay in in the run defense. Good fake. He turns, he looks. It's a good pattern run by Lester, clears the linebacker and gets away from... A couple of them. What a hit by Muse right there at the end. Glasper in Fallsboro territory at the 48. First down and 10. 6.15 to play first half. Frank to throw again. He dumps it to Redmond, who has some room. Now cutting back against the brain, but that will hurt him because he is knocked to the ground by Paul Schultz, and uh, it looked like Redmond had more room to the outside, Mike. Well, it wasn't so much that he had running room to the outside. He would have had to stay on a pretty straight line, and maybe that's why he didn't do it. He had to tiptoe a little bit, but you're right. He had three blockers in front of him, no defenders at all for them to hit at that moment. He would have picked up a minimum of 10, 15 yards by continuing in that pass. He's thinking about a 48-yarder for a touchdown. Paul Schultz with a fine play. Redmond lost a couple of feet on the play. Second down, still call it 10. Redmond alone back behind Lee Frank. Frank's had a good day throwing the football so far. Draw play to Redmond, and that's not going anywhere. Another big defensive play by Schultz, who's made two in a row. Paul Schultz, great Paul's were a wrestler. We've seen a lot of him this winter, and he made a good play there. Debzanski also helping out. One-yard pickup, third down and nine. What they're doing is what we said Glassburg defense is going to have to do. They're hitting the blocker, they're controlling the blocker, and they're continuing to look for the play, and then they're getting rid of the blocker and filling the hole. Bateman, the split receiver to the right. Passing down, coming up for Frank. Third down and nine. All at the 47 and a half yard line. Frank, good throw, but dropped by Bateman. A catchable ball, and that was, uh, he was right at the first down marker, but Bateman, a uh, great receiver, couldn't hang on to that one. Ball got there maybe just a little too quickly for him. I'm not sure that he really had a good look at it, and as a result, couldn't control it. But on that pattern, that time again, it was the crossing pattern where Lester from the end will break out into the short flat. The wing back will go down and hook around 12 yards. But what was nice about it was the way uh, Lester cleared. They're going to put that one in the book for later. Here we go again. Boy, look at this gamble. Fourth and nine from the 47-yard line. Frank over the middle to Bateman. No. No, he's not going to make it. Quarles with another big play, and Paulsburg will take over the football. And excellent field position at their own 40. How about that gamble? 
Well, they're at midfield, and I don't think they want to give Paulsboro the football. They want to keep that drive going. They recognize the importance of getting a score at the very least before halftime. They can't give up another score. That's what's in their mind, so they want to try to control it. But what hurt them on that drive, Bob? The decision by Redmond. John Avini, 69-31 in 10 years. Avini coming back to Glassboro High School after his collegiate career and professional career. And that's where he graduated from, and he's been a valuable addition to that school, of course, over the years. Ball stripped from Worthy. I believe Worthy came back and got it. What a play by Worthy, Mike. He had the hole. He had the ball stripped and somehow had the presence of mind to find it and come back and sit on it. Great play by Worthy. And another big pickup by John Worthy, who's had a superb first half. Nine yards to the 49. Clock running, 4.05 to play. Let's see what happens here, where he, he loses the ball right there and gets a fortunate bounce as it comes right back to him. That was the kind of break Glassburn needs to get back into this game. Free play for Brady, but they give the handoff to Worthy, and those, those holes inside created by the Fallsboro offensive line, tremendous stop by Barrett, but another first down pickup to the 46. Paulsboro would love nothing better, Mike, than to simply run out the clock and score just before halftime, not give Glassboro another shot, and that would make it very difficult for Glassboro to come back. Again, going with the fundamental stuff inside, using Pandolfo, Cockrell, Schultz, Wilson, and, Bur and Bowen, getting uh, the beating the defensive line for Glassboro. Brady with another oh. great read. Look at the hole for Muse. Looking for one block from Pandolfo. Doesn't get it. Still on his feet. What a run by Muse. Touchdown! Touchdown! What a run by Muse! Oh my goodness! And Mike Brady, Mike, with another tremendous play, but he's hurt back at the 45-yard line, lipping. Look at the Paulsboro fans. What a run by Muse! It's 22-0 Paulsboro. Tom Brown has got to be enjoying what he's seeing. No penalty flags down. However, Mike, back at the 35-yard line, Mike Brady, the great Paulsboro cornerback, is down. Remember, you talked about him limping. Uh, after the previous score, or his long run. Had the injured ankle early in the year, of course, and that's what they're worried about. But this time, Bob, what he does is he makes the blind pitch. There was no way I thought he was going to get that pitch off, but he did, as they really closed on Brady quickly. But he is the number one concern of Paulsburg right now. Nobody in the stands really looking at the scoreboard, Bob, as they're taking a look down at the doctor and the assistant coaches as they uh, really examine Brady and they'll get him off. The real question here whether he'll be able to come back again. And He's a tremendous competitor. He was replaced, of course, by Frank Purnell early in the year. Did an outstanding job for two games. And right now, uh, Purnell is going yeah, in. He'll have to go in. Mike, he is fearless on that pitch, isn't he? Absolutely Unbelievable. fearless. Unbelievable. That time, he didn't even look, knew where his man was and made the toss. So Frank Fernell, senior quarterback now with a chance to add two more for the Raiders. He makes the pitch to Muse. Muse trying to get to the outside, nothing doing. Penalty flag thrown, but a good defensive play made by Lewis of Glassboro that time. Penalty is on Glassboro, however. Well, they're gonna get another shot at it. Well, I tell you, you can't say enough good things about Mike Brady on that option play. He runs it absolutely flawlessly. We have a personal foul on the defense. If you refuse it, it's all over. If you accept it, we'll go half the distance. You'll get the ball on a one and a half yard line. we will be a retry, all right? Yeah, I wonder what Cherish will take. <laughs> but I tell you, Mike, you have to also personal give some... Personal foul, right here, retry. Credit not only that Fallsboro offensive line, we've talked about it, but what a day Muse and Worthy have had. They've been unbelievable. Muse with just a great run. There's the concern, just on the top of the hip, uh, the lower area there, they'll put some of that uh, ethyl alcohol on there and freeze it up a little bit, try and take some of the pain away from him. Surprise, though, it is not the leg that we thought was uh, concerning him, but it is this area right here, up uh, right above the top of the hip. So now they'll do it from the yard and the half line. Using Worthy behind Purnell. Purnell will be stopped short of the goal line. He obviously is a little bit rusty and understandably going in there. But Mike will look at that incredible touchdown run by Muse and the pitch from Brady. Again, watch how quickly the defense this time. Lester closes on Brady. There's a tackle coming also, and it's just a blind pitch to Muse. Just beautifully run. 
Outstanding execution, and now downfield, credit Pandapo, who's out there in front, and also Muse, who waits for the block, sees where it goes, allows him to cut back inside, and then just says, come on, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? I'm going to go the other way. Makes the move to the outside. That's the angle he had, and then just finds the end zone, and in over the marker has the touchdown. So you saw tremendous read by the quarterback and an outstanding uh, downfield block by the lineman, and then a super run by the back. And great camera work by the Channel 5 crew, Mike. Well, they're doing a job today, too. What a game that young man has played so far. He has one of the touchdowns and has set up one, this quarterback brilliantly. Boy, 20 to nothing for Falls for a 325 to play in the half and Brant to kick it off again. Falls for an EJ, big play. They've got Redmond in there, Mike. That's how important uh, uh, they think it is now for them to create something. Man with the carry, trying to get to the outside. Gets one block from Redmond, but goes down at about the 24-yard line. And these are probably, Mike, the most important three minutes and 18 seconds in the Glassboro season right here because they have to get a touchdown. The important thing for Glassboro now, particularly with the responsibility on Lee Frank's shoulders, is he's got to know, look, if we do try and get it, if we try and get a score, we're going to have to probably do it in the air. I have to make sure that anything I throw, the receiver is dead open. I cannot afford to throw in the coverage. An interception here would just kill us and close the door. They're going to keep it on the ground. First play, Redmond with a pretty good hold. Runs into Lamont Briscoe. Redmond has not had a bad first half. He has had some yards, but they kept him out of the end zone. That's the most important thing so far for Fallsburg. That last drive, uh, what, 59 yards. So they've got a 59er, they've got an 82-yard drive. They are really controlling the football, Paulsboro. Six-yard gain by Redmond, second down and four. Clock running, 2.35 left in the half. There's a reverse again with Bateman. That play has run well all season long. He gets the first down, still on his feet, and a penalty flag thrown as... Blanding climbs on Bateman's back to finally bring him down. The flag was thrown so late, nobody out there by Bateman. I've got to believe it's got to be a face mask, and they're going to pick up 15 more yards. You're right, it is a face mask. So that's a big call for Glasper. They need something good to happen to their cause. We have a personal foul, face mask by the defense. We're going to go 15 yards, all right? Yep. Okay, I'll give you a first down. That's the we'll way a referee down, should do it. We'll go from the end of the run. Now here's Bateman coming back inside, takes the handoff from Redmond, has the blocker out in front of him, Lester. Now the senior, Bateman, reads it well and says, all right, Blanding, you're not going to control me. Aaron Blanding, number 34. It's going to take Muse at least, and Quarles also to help bring him down. There's the flag as they grab this face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense first down. As for at the 41-yard line, plenty of time. Clock running, 2.20 to go in the half. Redmond. Blanding pushes him out of bounds. Great defensive play by Blanding. Gets some help on the corner over there from Gentile. I'll tell you right now, you don't like gadget plays in definite passing situations, and this is not a definite passing situation, but even down 22 to nothing, and maybe the secondary playing somewhat deep, I think at this point what I would use is that a pitch out pass where Redmond stops after he runs to the right and then throws downfield. Be a good situation for it. You don't want to do it on third down or fourth down or obvious pass situation, but uh, they just may be keying on Redmond so much that the Glassburg team could take advantage of it. And Redmond already has one touchdown pass from the halfback position this year. Paulsboro want defensively wants to talk about this situation. Jerry Taraishi in the huddle. They're in the driver's seat, 22 nothing, but they want to deny this Glassboro touchdown and go to halftime with the three touchdown advantage. 2.05 to play. First half, all balls for us so far. You know, the Colonial Conference this year, Bob, was really uh, something as we take a look at our promo for sounds, the latest music video, plus giveaways Sunday through Friday, 1030 on Channel 5. But the Colonial Conference, the real question was, was it a great conference because it was so well balanced, or were the teams going back and forth because they weren't all that strong? And uh, Paulsburg pretty much answered, answered that charge positively for the Colonial when they went down and destroyed Pleasantville in the semifinal game and now going against the best in the Tri-County Classic Division coming out so strongly. Second down and seven. It's to Redmond. Cutting back inside. Lowering his head. Gentile with the tackle. Quarles there. But a good run by Redmond. And Glasper trying to get its offense unleashed for a late score. The 
Run by Redmond to the 30 yard line, first down and 10. They'll wind the clock, 157, 56 to go in the half. Glassboro, if it can score here, right back in the football game, but to go to the halftime break down 22 nothing to a team that plays defense as does Fallsburg would be very, very difficult. Redmond again. Good defensive play by Pandolfo. Defense doing its job that time, limiting them to less than two yards, and uh, the offense then pretty much forced to say, with the time the way it is, we're going to have to go to the air. You want, remember, offensively four or more, Defensively, you want to limit them to two or less if you can. Landing also with help on that play, along with Cornell, second down and eight. Frank to throw, good protection. Bateman catches it at about the 10, falls to the eight yard line. That's where that six foot three frame comes in handy. Quarles with the tackle along with Humes, but a big first down pickup and Glassboro has a first and goal from the eight yard line. And they know how important it is, they got the play in quickly this time with Woody Griscom who's running them back and forth along with Glenn Escrow. Frank has the play already as they wind the clock. They lost little if any time that time. They're going to have to get this score, Bob. No question about it. Final minute. 55 seconds clock running. Redmond. Knocked down at about the five yard line. Quarles in with another tackle. Remember Mark they used also some, there. They used some timeouts earlier, Bob, to slow Paul's for down. This, uh, I'm not sure, but I think this might be their final timeout that they're going to call now. 44 seconds, what they want to do, Avini will talk to uh, his people on the sideline, and if I know John Avini, Bob, he will call a couple of plays. He'll tell them to go out there. He's talking to Escrow over there, number 27. His assistant's alongside with him, and now John's going to come out. They've made the selection. The staff uh, around him, Tucker and Barrett, were with him. Avini comes out now. And he'll talk to his team. He'll say to Lee Frank, look, what we've got to do is we've got to have a couple of plays ready. 44 seconds to go. Obviously, you know it's going to be Redmond, right? He's got to have a shot at it. And it'll instill in them the importance of how much they've got to score here. The final five yards separating them, I think, from almost being out of the ball game and really having a shot at it. And before they finally drew some people here, some people didn't think with the uh, admission ticket price that they had to that the state has instilled, they would get this many people, but a good turnout. They know how important this is. They're the Glassboro fans you're looking at over there. 44 seconds to go in the half. Glassboro with a second down and goal. And look for Redmond to carry the football again. Oh, reverse, Bateman gets down near the one. He's close. Gonna have to hurry now. 36 seconds, 35. Glassboro apparently out of timeouts. Bateman with the reverse carry to about the one yard line and uh, I'm sure they'll give the ball to Redmond here. 25 seconds, time for maybe two more plays if they don't score here. Redmond dives, is he in? Yes, he's in. He's in, touchdown by Sean Redmond with 15 seconds to go in the half and a big touchdown it is for Glassboro. It gets him right back in the football game at 22 to six and the Glassboro fans finally have something to cheer about. Paul's Bar defense, everything they uh, had to do, they did. They stacked it up in there, and Redmond, just with that lean forward, was able to get back in. And now Glassboro apparently had one final timeout because they're going to take it here, and they're going to talk over how they're going to go for the uh, two-yard conversion. What's that give him, 200 points on the season? Uh, yeah, it gets him over 200, or that uh, 200 202, mark. yeah. John Redman, leading scorer in the state of New Jersey, still with a shot at Charlie Flyer's all-time South Jersey record. And I, no more important touchdown in his career than that one, Mike, because it certainly with 15 seconds to go in the half gets uh, Glasper right back in the football game. The fans over it. there were standing with bated breath, waiting, knowing we've got to get something, we've got to get something. And they finally exploded on that short run uh, by Bateman. I want to credit John Avini. And when he came out, Bob, we felt, felt probably everybody on this side of the field felt on that first play it would be Redmond. Instead, he went back to what had been working for them so well, that reverse to Bateman. The Paulsburg team reacted, uh, moved to the left side to try and stop Redmond, and that left only one man to handle Bateman, who got him down to the one-yard line. Now, big two-point conversion try, down by 22 to six. The point's very important for Glasper, and now they need two. Frank, 
going into the end zone, but that'll be, he got it. Oh my goodness, Quarles might tip the ball right back to Lester, kind of nonchalanted it. He knew the ball was his. Instead of catching the ball or batting it forwards, he batted it straight up in the air, and Lester caught it 22 to eight, and that could be a very important two points. Now take a look at the short touchdown by John Redman. He's gonna try and get up in the air and leap over on the left side. He can't really do that because the Paulsbury line did a fine job, but it is the forward motion of Redman that just gets that football across the plane of the goal line to give them the score. But on that extra point play, Bob, the minus and a plus, a minus to Quarles for nonchalantly, as you put it, knocking the ball in the air, but a real plus to the concentration of Timmy Lester. That two points could really loom large in this football game. 32 touchdowns on the season for Redmond, and uh, let me correct that scoring totally as 200 points, 62 touchdowns for his career. 62 touchdowns in a high school football career. That is amazing. Ah, oh, good. They're going to squib the football. They don't want a chance of a long run back. Wigglesworth. They don't want either Quarles or Merch if they have a chance to take it back all the way here. 15 seconds to go. Smart play here by Glasper, the up man. Cornell will take it at his 35, looking for running room. Finally knocked down with 10 seconds to go and a half. Fallsboro with a decision here, whether they just want to let the clock run out or let Brady put one up in the air. And uh, Mike, Frank Purnell still in their quarterback, so that uh, creates a question uh, as to the health of the starter, Mike Brady. That'll do it for the first half, a great first half of high school football in the South Jersey championship game. Pauls for a 22 and Glassboro 8. We'll be back. With the Bulldogs of Glassboro, 22 to 8 in this South Jersey Group 1 uh, Final football, 1984. Mike Linder, along with Bob Schreck, and Bob, this first half is, was dominated most of the way by Paulsburg and really key by the tremendous play of quarterback Mike Brady. One of the tops around, we really saw him execute that option play so tremendously in the first half. Did a great job with it. And we'll watch him right here on a big run where he uh, reads the key perfectly as Lester goes inside, and he turns up as the corner, Barry Lewis, goes to the pitch man, and Brady downfield not only read the key well at the line of scrimmage, made the right decision, but then as Mann tries to get him, and then Lewis tries to get him, he's able to avoid their tackles and get extra yardage, and that, of course, led to a one-yard touchdown run by Brady later. Glassberg comes back to score right in the closing seconds on a one-yard plunge by uh, Redman, and Redman has been limited uh, this game to 68 yards, limited. Isn't that something when a back gets 68 yards and a half, but uh, it's been a tremendous football game, and the scoring summary really is a surprise the way Paulsbury handled things. John Worthy with a 12-yard run on the Paulsbury first possession, and Brady with a two-point conversion pass to Campbell, and Paulsbury led it 8 nothing. And Brady with a one-yard keeper run for the second score. Worthy also ran it in on the conversion. Paulsbury had a 16 nothing lead. And the third score, that great run by Robert Muse set up by the uh, Brady fake and pitch. Conversion run no good this time, but Fallsboro's lead had mounted to 22 to nothing. And then the touchdown Glassboro had to have with Sean Redman scoring on a dive play, diving over the uh, line with 15 seconds to go in the half. Uh, that's their only score. And then the two-point conversion pass, good from Frank to Lester, but only after Quarles, that great defensive back for Fallsboro, tipped the ball straight back to Lester. All right, we watched uh, Brady earlier at the this halftime summary uh, when he made a run. Now he comes and he makes a tremendous fake down inside and then has the men collapse on him and pitches the ball to Muse. What an outstanding execution of the option play here. Muse downfield will look for his guard, Jimmy Pandolfo, who's the leader of this club, who's going to have to try and handle Lee Frank, number 14. He does that. Muse steps back inside it and now smells end zone. He says, who's going to get me? Not you, Robert Mann. I want a touchdown. I'm going to get the final five yards on my own, and he does it. Hits the flag for the score. So the option play and the execution of that by Brady, Muse, and Worthy has been the difference in this half. Please stand, stand well, Glasper is going to get the football here to start the second half, Mike, and if they can take it down the field and score another touchdown, we have got ourselves a football game. 
Two big questions in the second half. We saw the injury to Mike Brady, the outstanding quarterback for Fallsburg. First question is, is Brady going to be able to play? The second one, we mentioned here that uh, Sean Redman has 68 yards in the first half. He needs 100 and, uh, what they need, 112, I believe, for 2,000 on his career. I say it comes down to, can Brady play? Can Redmond get that 112 yards? That should be the difference in the ball game. Here's the stats for the first half. The teams are even with first downs, nine apiece. Passing has really been Lee Frank all the way. Fallsburg trying but one, and that was incomplete. But uh, uh, Frank is five for eight with one interception, 68 passing yards to none of Fallsburg. But look at this turnaround. Fallsburg, 212 rushing yards to but 94 for Glassburg. Total yards then, 212 to 162. The only turnover, the interception, thrown by Lee Frank. 22 to 8, second half action. Bob, this is going to be a great final 24 minutes of regulation. Remember, the possibility exists in state playoffs that we could have an overtime. <coughs> Excuse me. So Brant will tee it up for Paulsboro. Glassboro still using Redmond on the return team along with Bob Mann. Redmond scoring just before halftime. 15 seconds to go before the half. Uh, and it's 22 to eight for Paulsburg. Big crowd on hand, second half action in the South Jersey Group One final. They kick to Redmond. Ball takes a funny hop behind him and he'll down it in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. So we'll get our question answered quickly here. Can the Glassboro offense continue what it did in the late stages of the first half and drive down the field again? Redmond has also already hit one milestone. Mike was talking about his yardage, 68. That put him over the 4,000-yard mark for his career. And we see Purnell, the backup quarterback, still warming up on the sidelines. And Redmond shooting for that 2,000-yard season. First and 10, Glassboro from its own 20. Redmond with the carry. Not a whole lot of room for him this time. Got a couple of yards over the left side of his line. Fallsboro has been tough defensively all day long. Second down and eight for Glassboro, just underway, second half. Fallsboro and Glassboro have combined to win each of the last five Group One championships. They're gonna make it six today. That's an amazing record for these two Gloucester County schools. Frank, over the middle, wide open Lester. He has a first down and more out to about the 34 yard line. Tackle made by Gentile and by Humes, but uh, Frank really on target today. We talked about him in the opening, Mike, that 256 yard game that he had against Clearview. A three year starter, and of course he has the right to call audibles at the line of scrimmage, and he may have audible that one. I love it when the coaches have the uh, philosophy that, hey, if we have a pass in the first or second down, we're gonna go with it. First and 10 from the 34. Bateman in motion. Frank to throw again. Dumps it out. Uh, Bateman struggling for some yardies, but he'll lose a couple. Read very well by Paulsburg that time. Gentile, who's had a great football game out there again for a tackle. And Len Purnell, number 44. Frank Purnell's brother joining in on that tackle also. They did read that beautifully. And they had Redmond swinging out in the opposite flat, going uh, for a short pass. And they may want to put that one down in the uh, playbook for later because he was open going down the opposite sideline. Loss of four yards, second down and 14 for the Bulldogs. Quick pitch to Redmond. He picks up some yardage. Funk makes a tackle, Gentile again. Gentile all over the field today, so Redmond picks up the four that was lost, plus three more. It'll be third down and seven for Glassboro. Frank facing another possible passing down. Bit of an altercation in front of us down here, Mike, and the Paulsboro stands can't see what's happening but everybody up looking at that third down and seven for Glassboro Frank with excellent protection wide open over the middle Bateman loses the football Paulsburg. and Paulsburg recovers Bateman had the first down lost the football and is that Quarles Albie Quarles with another turnover Bateman uh, not at all happy there is he? no he's upset with himself that was a great throw by 
Frank. Bateman had the first down. There's Albie Quarles. He has accounted for both turnovers today. All right, third and seven. Remember, a tough situation for a quarterback to throw, but he waits. He sees Bateman clear across the middle. He's got it. There's the tackle. Ball knocked loose by Aaron Blanding, and then coming in Quarles quickly to make the recovery. Back to live action from the 49-yard line. Worthy with the carry in the Glassford territory as Frank Purnell, the senior veteran quarterback, uh, in there in place of Brady. Brady uh, working on the sideline, trying to get ready to go back in, moving pretty well, but so far Purnell in there. Three-yard pickup, second down and seven for the Raiders. The defensive unit now has to really tighten up. They've got to say, all right, we're not going to have the great execution, perhaps, but I tell you what, they're going to have pretty good execution with Purnell on there. Nobody talked more highly of Purnell than Tom Brown in those games that he took over for Brady. Hughes almost lost the football, hung up, hung on, and then uh, made a nice carry. Freshman Lewis making the tackle, but Hughes close to the first down, Mike, and what a first half Muse and Worthy had. Well, Muse uh, got 111 yards, and Worthy had 65. As we watched Brady saying, come on, let me in that ball game. I'm ready to go. He's running up and down trying to demonstrate to the coaches that he feels that he can do the job he wants back in that ball game. But you're right, between the two of them, what, 65 and 111, 176 yards between the two of them in that first half. Third down and short, less than a yard for the Raiders. Purnell keeps it. He has the first down. A very capable reserve quarterback, Purnell, doing the job. 18 to play in the third quarter. The ball at the glass for a 38 after Quarles, who had an interception, his 10th of the season in the first half, recovered the Bateman fumble. Bob, you realize how hard it must be for a senior to play as a backup quarterback, not really think he's going to get that much of an opportunity with a highly touted player, a junior in front of you, but to hang tough and to stay around till the end of the program, you've got to give great credit to Frank Purnell. He's not going very far as Bill Stewart makes an excellent defensive play for Glassboro. Slight gain, less than a yard on the play. The ball at the 38-yard line of the Bulldogs with 7.45 to play in the third period. And Paulsboro trying to match the touchdown that Glassboro scored just before halftime. 22-8, Red Raiders. You look at Delia, you look at Lester, you look at those uh, big experienced players up front. You've just got to be amazed at how well the line of Paulsboro has handled them. For now to throw, good protection. Throws deep. Looking for Merchant. He's got it right between two defenders. Touchdown. Redman and man over there, Mike. And somehow the freshman, Emmett Speed Merchant, slipped in between them and made the catch and calls for his lead. Mounts to 28 to 8. A 37 yard touchdown toss. You got to love the way he dropped back as deeply as he did to give Merchant a chance to clear. At the other end, what you got to do is credit the concentration that you generally don't get out of a freshman like Emmett and Merchant that time. Two defenders there. He kept running his route. He says, I know Purnell can get it to me. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to slow down. And I'm going to watch for that ball. Look it right into my hands for the touchdown. How about that, Frank Purnell? Great throw, but what a play by the freshman Merchant. We're going to be hearing an awful lot about that young man the next four years. Point conversion five, Purnell. Off the fingertips of... Uh, of Campbell, no good, so it's 28-8, and Mike will look at the touchdown again. Watch how deeply Purnell gets. He really wants to give Merchant a chance to clear downfield. They stutter step as he drops deep, and then he just winds up and lets it go. The touchdown will only be a 37-yarder, but it was thrown a lot more now. Look at that concentration as the two defenders are there, Mann and Redman, and the freshman takes it into the end zone, and he'll remember that one for a long time, and I'll bet he'll have a lot more fine memories as his career continues here. We'll be back, 28-8. Paulsboro leads four coming up after these words. Bob Stryak and Mike Lindner back at Paulsboro High School where the Red Raiders have struck again and lead it 28-8 on the Purnell. The Merchant touchdown pass. Redman from his own eight. Tripped up by Blanding, who makes a great play, and uh, Paulsboro really psyched up now. 7-14 to play in the third quarter, and other than the Glassboro touchdown just before halftime, pretty much all Paulsboro in this one. The 
Bulldogs will start from their own 21, and uh, every drive now a must situation for Glassboro. They have to score on just about every possession. Well, Lee Frank is 70% passing today, 7 for 10, but now Ballsburg can just drop back and play pass, and they're going to do it with uh, six defensive backs. Frank hits Lester, gets a great block from Bateman. And a good pickup, first down pickup. Quarles making the tackle, great block by Bateman on that play, springing Lester for some extra yards. Makes him eight for 11 with one interception. So Lee Frank is doing an excellent job as we wondered about that before the ball game today, whether or not he would have the good passing day for Glassburn. and he's certainly doing it now. And there's the experience of a John Avini, Bob. Don't go for the long stuff, just take it in short chunks. First and 10 from their own 33. Redmond looking for running room, doesn't get any. Schultz didn't make the tackle, but he made the play, slowing up Redmond so that his teammates could finish off the job. Love that fire plug in front, Lamont Briscoe, number 41. Uh, look at the size on him, 195 pounds, but it's packed in a frame, only five foot six. What, it, did, what did he say in the beginning of the show, right? I want Redmond, huh? Yeah. Gain of two by Redmond, second down and eight. Frank to throw again. Great effort by Lester, and Quarles just waiting there for another interception if the six foot three Lester hadn't been able to tip the ball, Mike. Well, they have a sense of where it's going, and they close down so well. Looks as if there's three defenders around the receivers, but uh, what happens is as soon as they saw him throw, they are able to close in on him. Here's the double fake. They do that nearly every time they throw. Now down, up over Lester's uh, out reached hands. A good thing he got that up or that might have been picked off. Third down and eight. 5.59 to play, third quarter. Glasper needs a first down desperately. On their own 36. Frank to throw. Getting a strong rush. Bowen chasing him out of the pocket. Finally gets it off. The ball dropped by Redman. Is this ball alive? No. no, incompleted pass. Incompleted pass as Redman was really popped, Mike. Lee Frank that time dropped so quickly without the fake, which remember we pointed out on the prior play, they nearly double fake every time he goes back that I think the defense was able to read that it was gonna be a screen all the way. As a result, the men who have to come up over there, the defensive end and the corner came up, took the screen play away. Frank eluded a tackler, but after he then got rid of the ball to Redmond, they were closing on him and really sucked Sean Redmond. Look at this, where is he going? Gonna flat, going to move out of the ball game now and, as we get the punt. Frank to punt in his own 36 yard line. Merchant and Quarles deep, high snap. Almost blocked and I believe, I believe it was Mike. I believe the ball was partially blocked by Scott Campbell, number 84. Yes, he says he got it. He's coming off with his hands raised high. Old Scott Campbell, number 84. He's uh, one of those seniors that you don't hear much about. Here it is, watch how close, he has to go up in the air to start with, and then Camel just coming in, extends his body fully, you'll just see him come into the picture right there and gets his hand on it. Great play by Camel, you know the key, Bob? Go in front of the kicker, don't go into the kicker, go where that ball is gonna be. And Camel, number 84, did it. All at the 49 yard line of Glassboro. News, big hole. Mancini with the tackle, but the Fallsboro offensive line continues to do the job, and Worthy and Muse continue to have field days. Seven-yard pickup to the 41 and a half. Second down, call it three for the Raiders, and another touchdown here, Mike, would, uh, I think, pretty much shut the door. Well, I'm not sure that there's much room of that door right now, or anything other than a minor crack open in it for Glassboro, but you're right. You want to slam it? Fallsboro can slam it right now. 4 loses the football on the snap from center. Glasper thinks it has it. Now, come on, you know they're all trained to do that now, high school and college. The coaches tell them when there's a fumble down there, run up to the pile and point in our direction. Maybe you'll convince one of the officials to make that decision. And the Glasper's right this time, they do get it. Looks like the recovery made by Ben Cradell, junior fullback, plays two ways for the Bulldogs. That's a turnover that they needed. That is the first turnover lost by Fallsboro today, and it gives Glassboro a new hope, starting from its own 40-yard line. When you're down 28 to eight, you've got to make sure that every turnover you convert into some points. They've got to get points out of it. Redmond, 
hanging on to the football. He'll gain six to the 46. Redman has had a good day. He's marching towards the 100-yard plateau, but his team down by 20 points. We have him at about 89 yards. Clock running, 4.05 to go, third period. Esper needs points in a hurry. Redman again. First down carry into the secondary. That's the Sean Redman we all have been watching for the last three years. Big first down pick up that time to the 43-yard line, and Redman ever closer to a 100-yard day. 28-8 calls for her, however. You saw the explosion from uh, Redman that time. What you didn't see was the ability to get going after he got into the secondary. Frank, that play busted, Mike? Yeah, no question about that. I can't believe they were running a naked reverse that time. It appeared that the backs went in the wrong direction or Lee Frank went in the wrong direction. That's going to make it tough because it'll bring up a second and 16, which forces a passing situation, allow the linebackers from uh, Paulsburg to drop off unless they decide on some kind of a blitz. But... On this play, you've got to believe that Lee Frank will have to pass. You'll see it. You can just sense the confusion here as Frank looks. And look, no confusion at all out of Len Purnell, number 44, as he comes on and seals off the outside his responsibility containment. Back to live action. Frank to throw. Getting a good protection. Almost picked off. What a collision between Muse and Lester. And Muse thought he had interception all the way. Lester, again, uh, did well, Mike, just to... Uh, Deny Pauls were the interception. Well, that was the play we talked about in the uh, second quarter of the ball game when we said they were hitting Bateman on that X play, that X pass pattern where the uh, wing back in the end reversed positions and Lester goes into the flat as Bateman crosses to the middle and then uh, uh, after he gets in the flat, he turns up field. I thought they'd save it. They did, but Muse read it well. Called this shy of midfield. Third down and a big 16 for Glassboro. Bateman, the split receiver to the right. Draw play to Redmond. He's going to get some good yardage. And he's still on his feet. Look at him battle for the yardage. Well scored of the first down, but a good pickup nonetheless by Redmond. I think that puts him over 100. Well, that gives him 34 on this uh, half. And he needed what? 32, so 32, he's got 102, yeah. right? 102 yards for... Redmond, so he's got another 100-yard contest. And they'll gamble again on fourth down. Fourth and about nine for the Bulldogs. Frank again to throw. Over the middle. Has Bateman, but he will not have the first down. Good defense by Pandolfo and by Gentile. What a game Quintile and Pandolfo have had. They're the leaders out there defensively. Pandapa is a leader all the way, offense and defense, but they came through again. Lee Frank is having a sparkling day statistically, Bob, but it just isn't getting enough uh, from his other uh, teammates. They've got to break some long runs, and here was the turnover. They got it, and they did not wind up with the score, and uh, that hurts because, as we pointed out, when you get the ball given to you, you've got to convert it into points when you're down 28-8. First and 10 from the 36. Worthy. Purnell doing an excellent job replacing Brady at quarterback. Brady had a brilliant first half. Falls for his depth at the quarterback position, obviously paying dividends. Gain of about five for Worthy. He's had a tremendous game. He and Muse. Second down and five. A little equipment repair, timeout for Bateman. And now they'll rewind the clock. 135, 134 in the third period. As for the defending champion, Paulsburg trying to unseat the Bulldogs. They go the opposite side. Big hole for Worthy. Into the clear. Mancini. Last man to compete. He's not going to do it. Worthy. Touchdown. 62 yards, Mike. That's what it is. 62 yard touchdown run by Worthy. Worthy well over 100 yards. Views already well over 100 yards. Between them, they are having themselves quite a ball game. Again. And that ought to just about do it, Mike. 34 to 8 with 111 to play in the third period. And uh, boy, you just can't say enough about that blocking.
by Fallsburg all day long. Timmy Lester, a blast for a mic, is back at midfield. He's seen stunned. Yeah, I, I hope, hope he's they see him. Not. Yeah, they Lester. do. They finally see him, and they'll give him a chance to come out now and attend to him. But there's the big man of the moment for Fallsburg, Worthy, and uh, they'll hold time up while they attend to Lester. But that's that dive play that he scores on where the man comes to the line of scrimmage, reads the block. Instead of going inside, he sees that they handle the man down to the inside, and then he just ran right by Barrett, number 66, and then turned on the great speed to beat Mancini in the secondary. It was a tremendous run, a, an outstanding read at the line of scrimmage to start with. And I got to love the offensive philosophy of Paulsborough and, and the way they're executing exactly the way the coaches diagram it and the way they show it to him uh, in practice. You'll watch as he comes to the line of scrimmage. The block is down to the inside, so he cuts to the outside. There's Barrett getting blocked. He gets off his man, but he cannot get to Worthy in time as he just runs by him. Now it's the sophomore Mancini in a race, a foot race that's going to be won by Worthy as he just continues to pull away from a pretty good football player, Mancini, and Worthy says, I want another six, I want some more yards, and I'm going to get it. It'll be a 62-yard touchdown run into the end zone, and Lewis, the freshman, realizes it. He won't catch up doing Worthy has it. Like a bit of irony as we look at the scoreboard, look at that score, 34-8. to eight. That was the score by which Glassboro knocked off Fallsboro last year. And look at the Fallsboro fans, those fans who uh, traditionally through the years have stood in that corner of the end zone cheering on Worthy as he completes his 62-yard touchdown scamper. Bateman going off the field. Fallsboro going for the two-point conversion. For now has the ball stripped and uh, this one will fail for Fallsboro, but not much has failed today. 1-11 to play third period. The Red Raiders 34 to 8 and uh, Mike I guess any question we had about how they would respond to that late glass for a score in the first half uh, they've shown with these two third period scores all right when we see this one again watch the block by number 78 Fred Wilson right down on the inside look at that couldn't be any better just seals that man there and then here's an outstanding block on Barrett also by the end is that funk and then it's just a foot race nothing to it I think that was Campbell all right, Camel did it, and that'll be the touchdown. It'll make it 34 to 8 with 111 left in the third. We'll be back with more following these messages. Don't run all over town looking for an auto parts store that has your auto parts. Come to Bowers Automotive Center and let the countermen do the running for you. Because Bowers. Brant doing the honors again for Falls, where he's had a lot of work today. Boy, they're kicking right to Redmond. Takes this one from the 10, starts slowly, Whoa. and he is hit in mid, mid open field tackle, a great tackle by Blanding. You know, Sean Redmond uh, might be hurt, Mike. He, he looked uh, somewhat tentative when he got the football, like he wasn't ready to run. I wasn't sure if he was waiting for a blocking pattern to open up or not. But I'll tell you this, Aaron Blanding epitomized Paul's bird defense on that play because Blanding was clearly blocked, knocked up in the air, Kept his bearings, wound up going right to Redmond, and wham, making that tackle on Sean Redmond, taking him to the ground, and Sean felt that one. Aaron Blanding, we'll be seeing him this winter in the Fallsboro basketball team, excellent basketball player. Dan and Redmond behind Frank, late stages, third period. Redmond with the carry, Gentile right there, doesn't make the tackle, but Gentile made, uh, Jeff Gentile made the play. Sean Redmond really tiptoeing now out there, and. Uh, Boy, you got to hope that that injury isn't starting to haunt him because this is a young man with a tremendous football future ahead of him. Who doesn't want him in the United States? My understanding is that Notre Dame is in the running. Wouldn't that be great if we had a South Jersey player wind up out there and become a big timer? I understand that uh, although he hasn't made any visits yet, Mike, that he might be leaning towards Notre Dame. Final play perhaps of the third quarter, eight, seven, seven seconds to go in the period. Frank to throw. Oh, good protection again. Almost picked off. He's, we've seen him do uh, that Humes. a lot. Wade That'll Humes work. has had a big season. That'll do it for the third period from Paulsboro. All oh, Paulsboro so far. 34 to 8. I'd like a look at that play before we break for the third quarter. Wade Humes with the number four up in the air. All the players have him right now. And they say the fourth quarter belongs to Paulsboro. Well, the whole game has belonged to him so far with the exception of one touchdown by Glassboro. Watch Frank go back. He'll look downfield. It appears that the man is open, but Wade Humes, who's played so well in the defense, reads it well, 
wanted the interception, couldn't get it as they were looking to get the ball to Glenn Escrow. We'll be back with more following these messages. Thirty-four to eight, falls are with the big lead as we enter what I think could be called now, Bob, the final 12 minutes of the 1984 season in Group One action in South Jersey. Remember, there was an opportunity for a uh, sudden death, but I don't think that's going to happen today. It hasn't been too sudden, in fact, but it's been a pretty good afternoon for Fallsburg. Last for a from its 20-yard line, third down and nine. Redmond into the clear. Good run by Redmond for the first down. Redmond's had himself a good ball game, but remember the job that Worthy and News have done. Redmond needs a couple of big runs, Bob, to get to that preseason objective, which I'm sure, knowing Sean Redmond, what a super, super young man he is, that's probably the furthest thing from his mind right now. But remember preseason, he came right out and said it. I want 2,000 yards this season. He can still get it. Awfully close. First and 10 from the 33. Redmond again. Battling for yards. He's getting hit two, three, four times in every play. He's still getting his yard, but uh, get this falls for a defense and credit for an outstanding game today. Blanding there again the part of the tackle. Gentile also. Boy, how much football have we seen in the last five years on Channel 5? Uh, but can you imagine? These are two Group 1 schools, both of them fairly small. And to think the kind of uh, uh, talent that they get, the kind of turnout they get, the kind of execution they get to go along with the superb coaching that exists here. You'd never know if you just walked into the stadium at Balls Bar today that this is Group 1 football. And really uh, not up at the top as far as enrollment goes. This is superb execution. These young men love to play football. There's the guy that enjoyed that great block to key that last big uh, touchdown run. Freddie Wilson, number 78. He's got something he can be proud about. Having been a back in high school and college, Bob, we used to love to get the write-ups in the newspapers, but any of us had any semblance of intelligence knew without the lineman up front, nothing happens for the back. I don't care who you are. And, uh, Muse and Worthy and Brady have been the benefactors today. That's a superb blocking by that front five. A real Cinderella story, I think, this Fallsburg team, Mike, because uh, despite the great Fallsburg football tradition, Hardly anybody expected the Raiders would be here today battling for their fourth South Jersey championship since 1979. Uh, what a job these players and coaching staff have done here at Fallsboro High School. Fallsboro has never lost a group one final and uh, it does not appear that that tradition will end today. Mike, if I had told you when we arrived today it would be 34 to eight at the end of the third period with Fallsboro leading, would you have believed me? Well, if you had told me it'd be 34 to eight with either of these teams, leading at the end of the third period. I wouldn't have believed it. Second down and five, 11-11 to play for 1984 football season. Ball play to Redmond, good room, trying to get to the outside. Straight arms, Blanding still on his feet. I tell you, Sean Redmond hasn't stopped battling for yardage. Another first down carry for Sean. Well, you gotta like that young man as a back, Mike. He is still in there battling with all he has. 5'11", 185 pounds, and you'll see the explosive speed on this replay. Gets a pretty good block up front. There's Geit, 61, through an outstanding block, and now Redmond turns to the outside. Blanding really has to struggle to hold him up until Purnell can come in and finish him off. Sean Redmond, what a lot of thrills he's provided for everybody in South Jersey the last three seasons. Ball right at midfield, first and 10 for the Bulldogs, but they need touchdowns and need them in a hurry. Over the middle, Bateman again drops one, and that was catchable. Humes right there, but another good throw by Lee Frank, Mike. Well, Lee Frank has uh, not gotten the great ink, uh, not, certainly hasn't gotten the publicity that he has merited uh, in his three-year career. John Avini's done his best to clue everybody in. He's forever talking about Lee Frank and how much he likes him and how much he's been very proud of his efforts. But people, when they come to Glassboro last year, talked about the dynamic duo, Lockbaum and Redmond, and this year talked about Redmond. So Lee Frank has had to do it uh, very, very quietly, but he's been very efficient. Second and 10. A draw again to Redmond, still on his feet. He'll only get a couple of yards this time, however, as the draw play was Redwell. Funk with the initial hit on the play. Gary Funk has had a great season for Fallsboro. 
Yeah, the other second leading scorer in the Colonial Conference is an end, Mike. Yeah, well, they haven't had that great uh, scoring in the Colonial this year, but Bunk has been there at opportune moments for Fallsboro and has performed just the way Tom Brown said he would. Third down and seven, clock running. Frank again has to throw in almost every play. Hits Redman, breaks one tackle, still on his feet. Twists oh. looking for the first down marker. I think Lester may get called for a clip, an illegal block or something over there as Lester and Quarles were going at it. Number 80 for Glasper, number nine for Paulsbar. We'll wait and see what the call is. It will hurt because Redmond's advance was very close to the first down. Can I have a red caption, please? That was third down, okay? We're gonna have fourth and short. We'll go back 15 yards from the clip. With the clip down there, we'll go from here. Back 15, be third down, and I don't know, about 15, or fourth and one. Third and 15, that's a good choice. We'll go back. John Lesko. Like him, he makes those calls very clear to the players. You know, the other night, Bob, we did our first basketball action of the season on uh, Channel 5, and you, of course, on one of those many, many excursions, this time to Washington, D.C. We had a clip, offense, third down. And uh, on that game, joining me was Steve Crisp, who told me a little story. I asked him, how come you're not coaching football anymore? He, of course, uh, coaches soccer in the early part of the fall, but he said, hey, Four years ago, I had Sean Redman and company as a freshman team that went undefeated, and something told me I was never going to top that performance, so I gave it up at that point. Third down and 15 for the Bulldogs. They use Redman as a wide receiver this time, right over the middle of Bateman. Makes a good cut, and I believe There's he has a first down, but lost the football on his way down. Oh, boy. That's tough for him. Dave Bateman has had such a good season. He's having some trouble hanging on to the ball today. I don't know who got that. Was that Falls or was that Muse that came up with that ball? Well, they were all there, and I'm not sure which one will get credit, but they all deserve some merit on that play. And we'll watch this time. Frank will look to the left as he drops back because Redman was out here at the bottom of your screen as a flanker. And he fakes that, tries to draw the halfbacks, and then on a look-in pattern to Bateman, he has it. It's a good hit. Another good hit, and then they come in and clean up on the reception. And look at them all jump, landing and quarrels and uh, uh, number 20 in there, also Gentile. Tough figures right there for Glasper, 9.05 now to play. And Fallsboro probably will just keep the football on the ground. Hughes has had a tremendous day along with Worthy. They've been uh, complimented each other brilliantly, and I believe Hughes is injured on the play. coaches running out on the field Robert Muse another of the calls for a basketball player what a job he's done today two superb football teams with outstanding seasons coming together here in the South Jersey group one final balls for losing during the season to two clubs in the Colonial Conference Sterling and Audubon Audubon may be the biggest shock that game what 22 to nothing and nobody anticipated that Tom Brown really had to take stock of his football team after that game and I think made the right decision. Bobby just said, hey, we were flat. This is not what we're capable of. Let's not look at that game as anything but a learning experience. Let's not make any significant changes or alterations and let's go back and just do what we know we're capable of doing. And they got rid of that, went on to share the Colonial Conference title uh, and uh, now coming down on what looks like a guaranteed block on the Group 1 South Jersey Championship. Glasper, on the other hand, was just a big shocker to uh, Delcy and again a beanie in that ball game I think handled it well and said we didn't play what we're capable of Delcy's a superb team they really handled us that day but uh, or that evening we had that game what was a 9,000 people at class for State College but that both uh, the defeats that we talked about mark the kind of football traditions at these schools and the kind of coaches they have they didn't dwell on it they learned from it and they went on to finish up uh, what is an outstanding season for both teams some concern now for Robert News as uh, Pete Lamonti, the athletic director, just coming into your screen down on the right. Uh, a lot of the players out there, the coaches, News has had such a brilliant football game. You talked about that Audubon game being pivotal, Mike. The balls were offense in the middle of the season uh, kind of disappeared. Uh, they lost 16-6 to to Sterling. Then, of course, the game we televised came back and defeated Gateway 6-0. Then were shut up by Audubon 22 nothing. So, over a course of three games, they only scored two touchdowns, but then... And you know who was missing in those games? Of course, uh, Mike Brady. Of course, uh, 
Since then, they have defeated Collingswood 41-0, Pleasantville 28-0 in the first round of the playoffs, and then West Stepford, a game we also televised on Thanksgiving 22-6, and uh, we don't like what we're seeing here as Robert Muse is being carried off the field by four or five of his teammates. And worse yet, they're calling for the ambulance. Oh, boy. What a shame. And looks like a knee, and that terrible, terrible injury. That's the one that everybody fears in football, and that's the one that can just linger with you and just make it so tough to ever come back. He's had a superb career. He'll get the plaudits of the fans as they get him to the sideline, but right now, everybody's just really worried about the well-being of that fine young football player. What a shame. So it's second and six from the 45 yard line. Merchant in there at the running back position. Now Worthy trying to break another one. This time is dragged down from behind by Mancini, but uh, John Worthy is having himself quite a ball game today. for Robert Mews. Boy, that's ready to put him in the ambulance. Terrible thing to see any time, but it's even worse. Than you're in your final game in your final quarter. 8.20 to play. Outcome of the game no longer in doubt. Concern for Robert Mews. Merchant, the freshman with the carry. Very little yardage. Calls for a discontent now, obviously, to keep the ball on the ground. Use up the clock. Only 8.05 to play. Robert Mews. Well, I hope that doesn't ruin his basketball season, Mike. Yeah, relatives obviously uh, crowding around him. They'll make that long ride to the hospital and then wait for the diagnosis. And hope it isn't as severe as it appears to be right now. Second and nine. Cornell hangs on to it this time. Lester with a good defensive play. time out for Muse and his injury. Bob, maybe take a little luster off of that play, and uh, we'll see it here as it is a good defensive play. Lester held his position well that time, and wraps up for Nell so he cannot make the pitch. And Bateman comes along to help him out on the tackle. Big hole again. Boy, that play has been there all day long, and Worthy has just been chewing up enormous chunks of yardage. Another first down carry. Blocking on the left side of that line for that play by Worthy has been incredible today. Yeah, the, the biggest surprise to me all day long has been the ability to handle the big tackles. Donovan at 225 and Delia at 230 with Stewart anchoring the middle. I just did not anticipate Fallsburg's line as quick as it is. And that's, of course, the key to good blocking, uh, the quickness of a, an offensive line. But I just did not think they would move them out. And, of course, Delia apparently bothered by some... Uh, nagging injuries just because Carmelinga, who's in there now in this series, has been playing uh, quite a bit of the ball game at the right defensive tackle position. First and 10 from the 24, Merchant and Cornell bump into each other. Merchant with little yardage on the carry. Get the clock running, 6.40 to go. Merely a matter of time now, and uh, wouldn't it be uh, incredibly ironic, Mike, if this score would hold up and uh, Paulsboro would avenge Last year's loss to Glassboro by exactly the same score, 34 to 8. They'd be happy with it, but the way they're playing, I think they want to change that score. They're looking for at least 40 points, maybe 41 or 42. Worthy again. Good hole again, and he's taking people with him. Glassboro just backing up now, aren't they, on the snap of that ball? They just don't have the enthusiasm. That's been robbed from them by the outstanding play of Fallsboro all afternoon. And they're going to have to really uh, get the old pride factor as we have another injury out there, this time to a Glassboro player. But uh, they're going to have to get the pride factor into play here to deny Fallsboro the end zone one more time. That was Lewis, but he's on his feet now. He's okay. Lewis, another one of the fine underclassmen. Only freshman, a freshman. Yeah, yeah, they talk about him and the future they anticipate out of that young man, he had uh, just a tremendous season on the freshman club and was brought up to play varsity uh, two or three games ago. And he's made some outstanding plays. 36 points, most points Glasper has given up this season. And remember, they went up against that juggernaut Delsey in that big game we talked about at Glasper State College. Third 
third down and two for the Raiders. 5.50 to play. Worthy again, first down carry one more time. And uh, oh, he's had a, some kind of football game running behind the left side of that Raider line today. They've got another first down just outside the 10 yard line. Now some of the youngsters getting into the ball game. Number 72, Barry Beckett coming out to play. Number 33, is that good? Is that a player we don't even have on our uh, roster sheet, do we? Number 33 in the backfield? Standing good, fine little balls for a wrestler. Oh, look at this for Merchant, my goodness. 10 yards. Oh, that was the easiest looking touchdown I think I've seen all season, Mike, and it's 40 to eight as Merchant to freshman scores his second touchdown. You talk about hitting the hole in a hurry, but uh, there wasn't just a hole there, Mike. It was a whole acre. I don't care how much they want to call him Emmett Merchant. It's got to be Speed Merchant from here on out, and he shows us on that play. He just goes, boom, 10 yards. It's over in the end zone. Touchdown, 40 points to eight. That's frightening speed, Mike, and they talk about his, uh, they think that he uh, is quicker than Willie Flipper Anderson, if you can believe that. Well, balls were making it look easy now. 5.18 to play. They lead 40 to eight. Cornell to throw for the two-point conversion. Knocked down, however, by Dype, and uh, we'll look at the Latest calls for a touchdown, Mike, and this one happens in a hurry, so you better keep your eye on it. Just a straight dive on the right side. Number 12, Merchant will get the handoff from Purnell. Bang, he's into the hole. Really not that big a hole there. He just finds it to the right side again, and whoom, right by the line of scrimmage. He's going to go in. Nobody in the secondary is going to get the Merchant. Mancini can't get over there, and he knows it. And Emmett really just slows up a little bit. Can you believe that? And it's still one of the quickest 10-yard runs we've seen all season long. Tom Brown coming down now from yeah. the press box, and I guess that signals it. Brown says, we've got it. Win number nine. We'll be back with more following these words. <laughs> what a workout. Really, wish I had a dollar for every ounce I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, hurry. Daddy and I have surprise. What is your thing? Wow, a new car. But how can we afford it? The insurance alone is so expensive. Not at New Roads Insurance in Glassboro. They take the time to research lower rates and quote prices over the phone. New Roads gave us their personal touch in finding the lowest quote possible with no hidden costs. New Roads Insurance Agency, 881-3231. When we close this box, we've made our best. When you open this box, you enjoy the best. Hot, fresh pizza delivered to you in 30 minutes or less. Because... Showtime's December movie excitement means everything... getting the South Jersey Group 1 Championship. They've got to finish off the final five minutes and 18 seconds. Bob? Grant kicks it to the up man, Barrett. Barrett with a pretty good piece of running for a lineman, gets it back to the 31-yard line, but season has only five minutes and 11 seconds left for these two teams, and Paulsboro High School is going to win another championship, and I don't know if anybody would have believed at the beginning of the season that the Raiders would do just this. Be nine and two. Glassboro also will finish nine and two. Frank still in there at quarterback, back to throw. And going for the whole bundle. Good. Oh, good, just in there, makes pretty good defensive play. Battling Bateman for the ball. Good at only five foot six, and Bateman at six foot three. Tough, tough way to throw when you're down 40 to 8. Everybody dropping off 20, 25 yards and says, oh, boy, it's going to be my time. Pick up an interception. I want one now. Here comes Pandapo, number 65 off the field, and you can bet they'll give him a big round of applause. What a football season for that young man, number 65, offensively and defensively. Touchdown club, lineman of the year. The honor Tuesday night. Redmond. 
This is him battle for the yards. He's not going to get much here, but still in there battling. Here is Pendolfo. Hey, with some happy teammates right there. And they, of course, played a great game. Schultz along with Scott Campbell. Three of the keys to today's victory. But there's the key to the season, according to Tom Brown and a lot of people down here in Fallsburg. Jim Pandolfo, number 65. 420 to play in this football game, in this football season. Third down and seven for the Bulldogs. Who would have expected it? 40 to eight, Falls were leading Glassford. And just about everybody ticked Glassford to win this game. Frank over the middle, intercepted by Brandon. Tackled by Geit, but uh, Fallsburg will have one more chance to score. Still 357 left. <laughs> enthusiasm on uh, Paul's first side and frustration on Glass first side there and we hope that that doesn't continue throughout the ball game. They'll come old Lamont and Briscoe down. Watch this now as Lee Frank is just going to not enjoy this play at all as he'll watch it again too. He'll get the ball across but there's Blanding coming up in it. Now he'll look as Geit comes in makes the low tackle. Blanding flies forward five or six yards and rolls a couple of times but all amounts to is 3.36 to go. Lamont Briscoe coming out of the game. I loved his play every ball game that we watched him. He sits on the bench now and will calm down. And Walsberg's going to run it out here. I don't know. They could <laughs> possibly make it even more, huh? They've got plenty of time to do that. I think anybody showing up for the football game right now, Mike, and looking at the scoreboard would really not believe it. 40 to 8. I don't believe it. I expected a close football game. Does not surprised me that much that Fallsboro won. I thought it was an even up ball game. I am surprised by the one-sidedness of the victory. I really believe that Glassboro, although down 22 nothing, uh, was going to come back in it scoring with just 15 seconds to go in the half, but uh, Fallsboro answered that with a couple of third quarter touchdowns, and it's been all Raiders here in the second half. Our congratulations to the entire Fallsboro football team, its coaching staff. Just another great effort. Win cash and prizes every Thursday at 7 p.m. on Channel 5 Bingo. The stars of the show, Jim Cockenbone and Stan Riddle. And there are these sad numbers for Glass for us. Three minutes, 34 seconds left in the football season. All at the 36-yard line. Merchant, who already has two touchdowns today, and remember, only a freshman. You gotta like the way Tom Brown spotted him all season long. I do. Especially, he's had to be getting pressure from a lot of the people in the Paulsboro area who've watched that young man in midget competition and have been talking about the career he's gonna have. And a Tom Brown who has the security of knowing uh, from looking at his numbers and the confidence of a good coach that I know what I'm doing. I'm going to spot this guy. I'm going to bring him along slowly. He's going to have nothing but positive experiences to build upon and it's worked out and he's going to be a, a future big timer for Paulsburg. Worthy who's had a 100 yards plus, really 150 yards plus. Third down and three after Worthy's four yard gain. Two minutes and 45 seconds left in the football season. There'll be no NJSIAA overtime in this one. Another credit that we have to point out is Purnell and his play here taking over for Brady in the second half. Mike Brady with the outstanding numbers, tremendous performance in the first half. Purnell coming in after Brady's hurt. Hasn't really hurt them at all. Oh, look at this. Passing with the big lead, uh, the intended receiver Funk, that ball knocked away. I guess they're trying to, Funk has had such a great season for them, Mike. I guess trying maybe to get him in on the touchdown action. Well, that is a little surprise having that play called. I'm going to say the young men called that in a huddle themselves. I can't believe the coaches called it. 217 left. Fourth down and three for the Raiders. Glenn Purnell now in there at a running back position with Worthy. He'll get the carry, and he might have the first down. I believe he has it by about a half a yard. Two ten left. Time 
time for John Lesko, I think, Bob, to step in as the referee and call both teams up and say, come on, calm things down, guys, as we see Purnell, that's Len Purnell, slightly injured on the play, and they'll bring him out. But, you know, the officiating this year has been superb, we've seen, and uh, the little uh, couple of difficulties we've seen so far calls to mind the fact that some of those referees have stepped in at uh, the proper time and reminded the young men how well they've played, and don't spoil it by an action that you'll regret, regret later on. A hard-hitting ball game is evidenced by the number of uh, football players that have gone down with the injuries in this ball game. But you expect that when a Paul's Star and a Glassburg get together. The Bob Shryock Show: Interesting people, interesting talk. Four times a week: Mondays at 7, Tuesdays at 10, Thursday at 6:30, and Sunday at 7:30. What do you have coming up, Bob? Two Sally Star shows, Mike. I think they're probably. Uh, I Sally remember her. Sally Star is interesting. An interview of, as I've had since I've been doing the show the last two and a half years. It was. I'm going to do one show, and uh, she was so interesting, so intriguing, and so many great stories to tell. We did two shows with Sally. Oh, Sally I did Star. one with uh, Bill Robinson, of course, uh, Turnersville resident who was former Philly, now batting instructor for the New York Mets and coach. And he'll talk about his new hitting clinic. So, pretty good guest coming up. Sally Starr, a lot of your audience, uh, although she was known for her children's shows, a lot of them will remember her since they grew up with Sally Starr on the old Channel 6 shows. Still Hi have Theater. her cowboy outfit, cowgirl Oh, outfit. she has a new one. It's, it's amazing. 22 years she did that show, Mike. 1950 to 1972. And they restart the clock. 2.05 to play. First and 10 for the Raiders. L.O.K. replaced by Merchant. John Worthy with more yardage today than Sean Redman, and who could have believed that would happen? Well, we came back at halftime saying the real two questions. Would Brady be able to play for Paul's star? And if not, could they respond to the challenge with the injury right at before the end of the first half? And secondly, would Sean Redman get the 112 he needed to give him the 2,000-yard career? Uh, or a year, and we felt that if Redmond did, that would turn things in the direction of Glasper. Well, he's got a lot of yards. I don't think he's going to quite make it to the 2,000-yard mark, but uh, Brady, as great as he played in the first half, they've been a good football team with Purnell leading the way here all throughout the final 24 minutes. Donovan jumping all over Merchant, no gain on that play. Paul's in no hurry. 107, 106. They'll just run it out in all likelihood. Jeff Frazier, a freshman, coming into the game. Remember playing as a freshman? Remember my first varsity play against Mass Bomb Tech as a freshman? And the ball was snapped. Before I knew it, I had two black eyes, and a couple of defenders smacked me real tough. Frazier getting that opportunity now to get into the ball game and feel what it's like to get hit by a varsity performer. Merchant with the carry. 37 seconds to play. Another first down for the Raiders, but they restart the clock, and they really only have to take one more snap. The 25 seconds there. Apparently, Bob's going to run another play, and it's Merchant Fraser in the backfield behind Purnell. They get denied. As Fraser gets his first chance, and almost apropos on the final play, Bob, of the of the uh, fine career for Stewart as we see some problems here at the end. They'll ferret that out hopefully and stop it quickly. Bill Stewart made the tackle. He had a great career for Glasper and, and his final play comes up with his final tackle. Paulsburg's going to win it 40 to 8. They're the South Jersey Group 1 champions and we'll be back with some final words and some interviews with the stars of today's game right after these messages. Stay with us. Glassburn and Paulsburg, the two teams that seem to always wind up in the South Jersey Group 1 Finals. A big celebration for the Red Raiders from Paulsburg today as they get the victory for the fourth time in the South Jersey Group 1 Finals. 40-8. to eight. The Red Raiders could do nothing wrong today. They were able to deny Sean Redman, who had a pretty good ball game, uh, over 100 yards. But it appears to us, although we don't have the final statistics, that Redman would not get the 2,000 yards that he had hoped for in his 
uh, year, 1984, and that, of course, because of them missing the uh, ball game against Clearview on Thanksgiving. It's a big day for Paulsboro, 40 to 8. They really uh, spread it around. John Worthy uh, did an outstanding job along with Mike Brady in the first half and Robert Muse and Emmett Merchant comes along. Worthy and Muse both getting two touchdowns. Brady throwing one to Merchant, Merchant running one in, and also uh, Brady scoring one of his of his own. 40 to 8. Nobody here, I think, would have expected it. Certainly the people who made the predictions before the ball game. In fact, most of them had Glassburg coming out on top, uh, but the, nobody would have expected this score either way, and uh, few, if any, had Paulsburg on top unless they were Paulsburg fans from a long time ago. They presented the mayor's trophies here today. The mayor's John Berzichelli of Paulsburg, Francis McDevitt of Gibbs Town, and uh, Bill Doughton of Glassburg, and the, ch and the trophies go to Jeff Gentile, who did a Tremendous job on defense for Paulsburg and to John Worthy, the offensive star of the game for Paulsburg, according to the people who voted for that honor. And he's Bob Schrack, special guest right now, Bob. John, congratulations on the great football game. You won one of the trophies, but more important than that, you won the football game. And uh, I don't think anybody could have guessed Paulsburg would win this big. Uh, I don't think nobody could have guessed we'd win this big. 40 to 8 with a running back like Sean Redman playing for Glassboro. And they only scored eight points. Can I say our defense played excellent today? John, you've had a great career, but you had uh, probably your best game today, wouldn't you think? Yes, I would. Got to give some credit to that uh, blocking on the left side, though. That hole was there all day long all for you, day. wasn't it? All day. Who were the guys doing it for you over there, John? Schultz and uh, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Were you? Go ahead. They blocked against Whitbury. Schultz came in and blocked excellent. His first game back, Haddonfield, he played guard. He's supposed to play center. He blocked excellent, sprung me on the trap, 48 yards. His first play back from when he was hurt. You and Muse combined for an incredible game. Too bad about Bob, but his knee didn't look too good, did John? I know. That's a shame. That was heartbreaking to see Rob go down like that. Were you two guys uh, even a little more psyched up, not only playing for the championship today, but going against the great back rack Redmond? Did that psych you up a little bit? Psyched us up. I think playing... Playing against Redmond psyched, psyched us up more than playing against Glass, just Glass for itself. Well, he had a good ball game, but uh, John, you wound up your career gaining more yards in this game than Sean Redmond. That's something you can remember for a long, long time. That's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. <laughs> How about this uh, this Paulsburg team, uh, John? Nobody gave you guys much of a chance to win the Colonial, let alone win Group 1, but you showed a lot of people. Yeah, I hate to say this about Mr. Vodge, but uh, <laughs> he picked us to finish six in the conference. And we won South Jersey Group 1 against a great team, Glassboro. Well, John never picked anything right yet, so you don't feel too bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> John, you played a great football game. Congratulations, uh, not only you, but to the whole team. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mike? And we would be remiss if we did not once again, of course, remind you of the tremendous career of Sean Redman, who's Glassboro. We'll take a look, though, at one of the big touchdown runs for Paulsboro that really made the difference today. And you'll see the blocking. There's what he talked about. Uh, right on the inside, and then there he goes, Worthy. Nobody's going to catch him here. He'll have this one to treasure for a long time, and he says, once I get out in front, I'm going to just sprint into the end zone, and he did it right here. Had no problems at all, and it's got to make some fans here very happy, and, of course, nobody could be happier than the guy we keep telling you has the best one-loss percentage among active coaches in South Jersey. That's Tom Brown. He gets his ninth victory today. Bob Schreier will talk to him about that right now. Tom, I've done a lot of interviews uh, like this with you, uh, winning Group 1 championships. This is four, in fact, since 1979. And, of course, you've been understandably happy each time. I don't think I've ever seen you happier, and I don't think I've ever seen a, a more overall devastating Paulsburg performance. Well, we played real well today. Kids saved their best one for last, and uh, I was a little concerned before the start of the ball game. We looked a little flat and... Uh, you know, uh, right before the ball game, everybody was very, very quiet in the locker room. We've never had that before. So I think they were really concentrating, and they really came to play today. And I'm very thrilled for our seniors. Uh, our seniors played so well, and we were picked to finish sixth in the conference this year. And uh, here we are with two championships on our belt. So it's a real tribute to our whole team. Of course, many, many factors today. Uh, Mike Brady, your starting quarterback, had a, an absolutely tremendous first half. Couldn't play the second half, but what a job Purnell did coming in the second half. I'm so happy for Frank. You know, all year he's hung with us, and he's had to come in in some big ball games and, and produce for us. And he came in today, and he produced. The pass he threw was just a fantastic throw and a great catch by a young freshman who's going to be a heck of a player for us. So I'm so happy for Frank and for our whole team. It was a real team effort today. You had some clinic blocking out there today, Tom. What a holes for Worthy and Muse all day long. 
Yeah, our offensive line has done a great job for us all year, and as I said before, they, they really saved their best for the day. They really came off the ball and exploded, and, and our backs really ran well and picked the right holes. I'm just so happy for our whole club. Of course, you did the job on Redmond, too, Sean. A great back, and you saw a good ball game, uh, but you never let him really break the big one. No, our, our, our defensive uh, uh, line really contained well today, and uh, we had some uh, a nice job by our secondary, an outstanding play by our linebackers, and... Uh, uh, of course, they dropped a couple balls, which uh, made things a little bit easier for us, but uh, it's just an outstanding effort, as I said before, the whole team effort. Mm -hmm. Glassburg came back just before halftime. You're up 22 nothing. They score one to get back in it, but then you come right back in the second half and, uh, and get the touchdown that really put them away. Yeah, that one really had us worried. They seemed to get a lot of momentum going for them and uh, scored the touchdown. And, you know, we were very concerned at halftime, but we just went in. We talked about we got to go out there and we got to block and tackle the same way as we did in the first quarter. And, we know the things that got us to where we are, and we got to continue to do those things. They've all been great ones for you, Tom, but uh, any sweeter than this one? Uh, probably not. Uh, you know, uh, as I said, this was a team that uh, the seniors uh, finished with the worst record we've had here since we've been here as a staff as freshmen. Uh, they were two and, two and six, and uh, to come back and win themselves two championships with the help of a lot of other the underclassmen, uh, I just really can't say enough about this team. I'm so proud of them. I wanted you to say something about Bob Muse, too, of course. So the one sad note was... Uh, that he went out late, it didn't look too good, a knee, right? I think it was a knee. I, I didn't have a chance to uh, talk to anybody yet about how serious the injury might be, but we'll have to check him and, uh, and see. I hope everything is gonna be okay because he's an outstanding athlete and uh, he's really an asset to our basketball program, so I hope that's not gonna hurt him. Tom, congratulations on a great victory. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Mike? Tom Brown will talk about those seniors that he had on this club for a long time.